Hey, family, before we officially dive into this episode, just wanted to give you a quick schedule update for the next two weeks. Um, So this week, this will actually be our only episode because instead we will be dropping a Monday and Wednesday episode next week because... Next Wednesday, we are going to be joined by a special guest to be discussing F-Boy Island. So make sure you are all caught up on the recent F-Boy Island episodes. We are very excited. So that will be happening next Wednesday. And of course, next Monday, we'll be having our typical Golden Bachelor BIP recap business. Um, So make sure you join us next week for those Monday and Wednesday episodes. And in the meantime, let's get into this recap. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Well, welcome home, family. It's your, your mom, mom and dad. dad. Yes. Good morning. Happy Halloween, almost, family. I know. Happy Halloween. And if you can't tell by watching the uh, YouTube, you can maybe tell by the sound of my bangles. My, Is that what they call them? Uh, I think so. Bangles? My bangles. <laughs> yeah, <those laughs> my bangles. absolutely gorgeous bracelet. Bangle tigers? Bangles. Okay. <laughs> that um, Evan and I today, mm-hmm. for Halloween, have dressed up in homage to our most favorite individuals Mm -hmm. from The Golden Bachelor. Now listen, we love all the ladies. Yes. But we had to dress up like our absolute icons, our queens, our most favorite. So obviously I'm April. (laughs) You just dressed up as your other identity. I mean, I dressed up as who I want to be. Like, this is the individual who I want to be for the rest of my life. April, I hope I am doing you proud. You look incredible. The side angle. I'm totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> You're 26 year old April. I feel like all. Wow. 26. That is, <laughs> that is incredible. Thank you. I mean, I feel like all I need is a martini. And, I know. Oh, God. I'm April. And Evan, but of course, mm-hmm. is his most favorite, mm-hmm. Susan. Yeah. Susan to me represents just what I want to be. Uh-huh. Slash also what I want. You know what I mean? Like, like the ultimate mother. Yes. So she's always positive. Mm hmm. She's always smiling. Mm-hmm. She's always wearing bright, beautiful colors. She really is. And she never lets whatever's happening get to her. It's very true. And so Su- this is not only is do I just appreciate her fashion and her look and I want to I just want to embody that. But I also appreciate what she does on the show and her energy because it is very it's like a healthy energy that I just want to be a part of. So I'm channeling her just smile at whatever happens. Roll with the punches attitude. You got to make sure you're smiling a lot this episode. <laughs> you, know what's, you know what's just one of those things you know how certain people's faces just don't look too good smiling i'm one of those people i'll be honest with you so you're like you look like you look good smiling yeah yeah i'm just you know i look better growly you know or i don't look better growly i just don't look as crazy but you know if you're gonna I mean? be susan you have to smile that's true throughout this episode she big. has epic, epic she has smiles. the most incredible smile i've ever seen it lights up a room but she's just always having fun it's true. I know I have to apologize, Susan, because I did not have the time before the episode to do full glam and yes. makeup on Evan because I am not like you, you absolutely stunning, gorgeous queen mm-hmm. who would sacrifice to do someone else's glam yes. and hair before her own. I have to work on that. I'm a little selfish. So I Nothing to do mine would be first. more amazing than having Susan come and style me as Susan. You know what Did I mean? Just... That would have been a, a great video. I mean, is that a request that we're putting out I to the honestly, universe? Honestly, that would be the ultimate. If we could get them in person, I would be honored to have Susan style me as herself. Wait, but I also want Susan to style me as Susan. Then we could Lee? all three be Susan. All three we can be <laughs> Susan. Susan. Yeah, <laughs> can we all be Susan? <laughs> I love this idea. <laughs> oh my God. Susan, uh, this is a cry for help. Susan, Please we're asking you to come on and be you. do our glam because honestly, too, does anything sound better? Than Susan doing your hair and like talking you through your day. Mm. We're just sitting in it right now. I mean, now. Wow. think about that. Yeah. I mean, listen, she's a hero of mine on this show. Look at us with our positive Halloween vibes. This is not generally, you know, in this show, we would dress up as someone and be like, yeah, because they're crazy. <laughs> <Sure>. This <laughs> is like we're, we're dressing up as actual heroes. No, this is like an homage this to people homage. that we love oh so much. This is true homage. And Susan's hair 
is iconic. So I do feel like, you know, I've, I've worn the wigs in the past. Sure. I feel like it would have just been another me in a wig situation where this hair is more like signature. Now, fun fact, I could not find the, the Susan, uh, pixie cut. Yes. So what I did instead is I took a black bob and I did cut it as best as possible as best as possible i'm not a hairstylist so yeah. forgive my work well i did cut it with ember's help because i was like ember she got home from school and i'm like <laughs> yes. um ember i'm gonna need your help can you stand outside and put on this black bob and i gotta do this susan on you and she's like what's happening yeah. <laughs> and i just edward scissor hands the bob as she stood there so thank you ember i will say this dress is this very comfortable and it falls on me it's absolutely I'm, i mean it makes me feel like a like a drink of water for sure yeah you know you do you look like I mean? a tall drink of water in this and isn't it so flowy and comfy it's very comfortable. I enjoy lovely. it. I might just kind of be rocking this for a while now. Now, I will tell you this. What's nice about both of these costumes is that we can go on Halloween as either April and Susan, or we could switch it up. And But of course, you could be Kris Jenner in this costume That's with a few true. tweaks. And with a few tweaks, I could be Jennifer Coolidge in this costume. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what I mean? Right. I could be Jennifer. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Maybe I'll be the next Golden Bachelorette. I'll come out of the limo dressed as a dolphin. Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> you're really so good, good at that. That was one oh of your best God. ones, too. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How do you do that? That's, like, not an easy voice <laughs> no, to do. No, I want a hot oh. dog real bad. I want a hot dog real bad. <laughs> I'm going to be the next golden bachelorette. I just know it. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really good. Can you imagine Jennifer Coolidge as the oh next golden bachelorette? Oh, my God. Oh, man. Just... I mean, G- Gary. She does that, that thing where she's like, she always, she's like, like she, she always has a look like she's looking in the sun, just kind of like. <laughs> oh my oh, god! Yeah. Wow, God! Oh, you, you're all so beautiful. Oh, you men are absolutely gorgeous. It's just like, is it too bright in here, Jennifer? Jenny? Do people call her Jenny, you think? I don't think so. Or if so. it's just Jennifer Coolidge? It's just always her Jennifer Coolidge. Her friends are like, hey, Jennifer Coolidge, do you want to go to lunch today? Yeah, no, you never call her Jennifer. How no, dare you? It's no. always first and last name. <laughs> always first and last name. But can you imagine Jennifer Coolidge on The Golden Bachelor? Golden Bachelorette? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> it would be incredible. Like, I believe Gary is out here truly finding love. But if he found out she was going to be The Golden Bachelorette, mm-hmm. we'd have to bring Gary in just like for a test run to yes. see how that would work oh, out. Oh, my God. She would, you know what she would be like in a more realistic sense? She'd be a great great like drop in a hundred percent like someone to drop in and do a day with them and do a thing but imagine like, her and gary together you be gary i'll be jennifer you're the golden oh, bachelor okay. yeah go ahead go ahead jennifer i've always loved your films and uh oh god i find you to be absolutely <laughs> exquisite and what i like most about <laughs> you is is that it's not just your gorgeous looks it's your absolute oh. sweet heart oh gary you are just the most gorgeous man i have ever seen in my life i can barely see it because it's so bright out yeah i am honored to be here with all of these gorgeous women yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then i feel like she divert the conversation to something about like getting a croissant or something like that. Do you know where I can find a croissant? I Gary, am absolutely quick, quick starving. Question for you. I'm starved. Any any craft services around here, Gary? I could really use a croissant. Yeah. <laughs> she probably says something about gas. Like you know, after the flight, I've had the worst gas. <laughs> I'm looking for some Pepto Bismol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta follow it up with it. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> you have a real shitty impression of Jennifer and just go, yeah, at the yeah. end. And then well, you're fine. It's kind of mind blowing how good. Like, it's so good, it's almost like not an impression. It just sounds like her. Oh my God, thank you. And you're also so hot, babe. Oh my God, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, there you go. But you know what? Back to our queens, yes. our true queens, yes. April and Susan. <sighs> Family, they're not here anymore. Askin is fully. Askin has been. Askin has been dispatched. Last week we <sighs> were just down to, s- and now Susan is yeah. gone. I could not believe that we are down to three women. 
it was just seemed like a weird move at the end to just be like, hey, by the way, half of you are gone. Like I would have, I would have appreciated like two gone so that we had a nice four. It was very, um, it disrupted my soul. It really threw me off. I was really expecting to start watching the episode and be like, you know, it's like when you expect that you're going to get into a warm bath and yeah. it's like tepid and that's upsetting. That's how I felt uh, like when I was the, watching oh the my episode. Gosh. Side note, when someone has a jacuzzi mm-hmm. and you hop in and you see that it says like, 97 it's a problem it's like you're insane make it 110 it's gotta be 102 103 you're hitting the 90s no that is a that's just water that's been left outside that's called bacteria cesspool factory you know what i'm saying make that thing hotter burn that bacteria for real side note you're absolutely right that that just triggered me i'm so sorry but that's how i felt watching it because listen i totally understand that this is a brand new show really and so of course i was expecting that it was going to maybe be a few less episodes than the uh typical season but this just really threw me off and again i get it because they had to test to see if the people were going to love it but the people love it the numbers are huge the people love it and so we have our very typical when we get to hometowns, it's four people, and then fantasy suites mm-hmm. are three people, and so now we're getting a three-person hometown and a two-person fantasy suite. Yes. Do we have? I don't even know how many episodes we have left. Do we have two left? Do we have three left? I don't know. Are we going to do a women tell all? We need a women tell all. I, I need know. the women back. I need asking to be reunited on the stage. The only problem with the women tell all is there's been no drama. But, it's just going to be like we just all went to Cabo together. <laughs> Partied for weeks. That's literally going to be it. They were like all the people who didn't make it, we just went on a vacation. We went on a cruise. We had a blast. We went on a cruise. You know exactly. how we did the Virgin Cruise a few seasons ago? Well, we decided to take those coupons. We took them from the audience, and we went on a Virgin Cruise. Virgin Cruise. But I mean, th- th- let's be real though. Yeah. Can you imagine a women tell all where there's no drama and it's just pure fun? It's just a, a women tell all with never have I ever in truth or dare and a great time. They should do one like in a pool. Like a woman tell all, well, they're just like in a pool. They're all in a jacuzzi and like a huge jacuzzi and they're just hanging out, having a good time. Do we have a live audience with this too or no? Yeah, they're just around the jacuzzi. I love that. They're just, they're they're also in the jacuzzi. There's just, it's just the biggest jacuzzi in the world. Okay, the audience is also the jacuzzi. Yeah, they just see the pool up and everyone's in the pool. Is the jacuzzi tepid or is it hot? Because I don't know if I could do a a hot jacuzzi as an audience member. Do you know how long those things take to film? That's like eight hours. hours. (laughs) No, it's like eight hours of filming. Oh my God. You would just prune up and you'd be baking hot. Whoever's strong enough stays. (laughs) It's like a special forces combined. Oh gosh, what a show. We've been watching a lot of that show. Anyway, side note. Um, this time I feel like everyone gets along so well. I'd almost, I'd, you know, I'd almost, I'd almost want them to do like a catching up with each Ooh, person. Oh, I like where they that go a lot. and visit them with their family. Because and we love them all so exactly. much. You we care see. about them. And then you see maybe if they're starting to date someone, boyfriends. Wait, I really, really like that you know idea. I mean? A full catch up. Exactly. Or they could do like a road trip together and catch up while they're on the road trip and they could film that. All these ideas are great. Everybody could get in a tour bus and travel across the <laughs> US of A. The Golden Bachelorette's on tour. Oh my God. On tour. Yeah, I know. I, I think that would be a great idea. I love them so much. I'm going to miss them. I'm going to miss God, I Susan miss them a lot. so much already. I know. You know what we did do too, oh, by the one way. One thing I will say, yeah. not to interrupt you, mm-hmm. but I do think. Well, you did, but go well, ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I will say. Do not interrupt. Do me. not interrupt. I will say that um, Susan, I felt like held people together I it'll know. be interesting to see if without her around we it's more meltdown city well i will say this though too we're doing hometowns and then fantasy That's suites true. where people aren't really interacting anyway so now That's everyone's true. kind of on their own <sighs> teresa's in trouble what do you mean i just feel like she's like i see in her eyes the like panic is setting in like before when there's more people i'm feeling like oh there's lots of people she still has like it's all like okay so when you're getting down to the end you start seeing the reality of like you might not make it yeah and i do see panic in her eyes more than anything well okay i was surprised by the top three we'll Mm -hmm. get into this before we get into the golden bachelor and then after that bachelor in paradise breakdown um let's take a quick pause Um, i'm gonna take actually my bangles off first so i don't hurt everybody's ears (laughs) 
Okay, so here's the deal, family. The holidays are upon us, and that includes our kiddo's birthday, actually, which means I likely will be doing more shopping. And if I'm already shopping at some of my favorite stores, why not be saving while doing it? Which is why we use Rakuten. Rakuten is the most rewarding way to shop and save because members earn cash back on everything that they buy. And Rakuten is a shopping platform that partners with thousands of stores across every category, like Sephora to Petco to E eBay. Again, stores I'm already going to be shopping at, so I might as well save too. Mm. Yes, with Rakuten, you can stack holiday sales on top of cash back to maximize your savings. And you can shop through Rakuten for practically everyone on your gift list. Exactly. You can earn cash back on makeup for the Aunt Katie in your life, perhaps. Skincare for the Evan in your life, perhaps. From stores like Ulta, Macy's, Best Buy. These are just some examples from a few of the many stores that Rakuten partners with. You are already shopping, so why not get some cash back? Rakuten has 17 million members who are already saving, and Rakuten also finds you the best deals on top of all of this, the best deals, sales, and coupons. Get the free Rakuten app and download the free browser extension. Yes, start all your shopping at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app uh, to start saving today. Your cash back really adds up. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get into Golden Bachelor. So like we said, I mean, we find out that there's only going to be three women at the hometown Mm -hmm. dates. The women are shaking a little bit. It's like we have six and we're going to get cut in half this week. It's getting real quick. And it's all happening so fast, I think, too. Obviously, the episodes are only an hour long, but I it just dawned on me that I'm like, oh, yeah, we're only doing one uh, one-on-one date every yes. episode. Yes. So it does feel like only a few women really have gotten one-on-one dates. Yes. It's interesting because I feel like yeah. a week ago, it was like, we're all here doing it. And yeah, now it at crowd. the end of this one, it's like everyone's like, oh, we have minutes until this thing's over. And like, I'm madly in love. I need to find out if they shot for less time this season. I'm curious. Yeah, because like to your point, they could have been doing this thing where like, we don't know how it's going to go. Let's just keep it short and sweet keep people wanting more or if it's a dud we'll get rid of it now i bet they're wishing they like they're like hey hey gary i know you're with this person and i know you guys are married now for like the last however many months can you guys uh reshoot some love interest scenes so right. they're gonna go back into the mansion and he's gonna <laughs> act like he's like still in love and still debating and he's like completely yeah i don't know it's like i think that uh although short and sweet though i mean it's exciting that's true. That's true. Now, who do you think is going to be the Golden Bachelor? If they do a Golden Bachelorette, which I sure hope so, who do you think is going to be? I think it's who you sit, right? I, I hope it's Susan. Okay. I feel like it's Susan. Everyone seems to love Susan. Um, the whole house loves Susan. The audience loves Susan. I think it'll be between two people. Okay. It'll be either Ellen Okay. Because her story's really great. That's true. You know what I mean? She'd be a great bachelor. But then she's this selfless, amazing person who deserves love in a really big... Like, I would say that, like, she just has, like... She screams, I deserve love. Mm -hmm, You know what I mean? mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good story arc for this. Like, giving someone a chance at really finding love. If it's not, I almost feel like it'll be Leslie or Faith if either of them don't make it. So do you think Teresa's going to be who he walks away with? No, I'm saying even if Teresa doesn't make it, okay. I don't see Teresa becoming the Bachelorette okay. or Golden Bachelorette. I see either Faith. So it's either Faith, Leslie, or Ellen. Okay. Okay. That's who I see. Now, I feel like I've heard rumblings online of Joan. Ooh, I like that too. Because, I don't know, I feel like I've heard rumblings. Also, she's popping off on social media. Really? Her TikTok? <laughs> really? Yeah. Is she killing she's it? She's doing like like cooking TikToks and she's getting like millions of views on her TikToks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, that makes sense then. Just go with the person popping online. I guess, yeah. But I just feel like on the show, we barely got a view of her. But I, I guess know, that, that's, I know. In, in the past though, they haven't always gone with someone who's like been majorly like a part of the show and we've seen a lot. I mean, yeah, and I guess we don't, we didn't know Gary until... We got to know him via the show. April would be fun. April because April would be... actually wouldn't date anybody. Like she would date them all, and at the end, be like, "No, I'm good by myself. This has actually really been fun, and I'm enjoy this." And like, hey, say hello to my new followers. I feel like, like and April... subscribe here. Like that's what she would do at the end. I feel like April would just come in and be like, 
listen, guys, we are going to have an amazing time together. We're here to party. We're ha- here to have fun. We're here to get loose and just enjoy life. Yeah, she would just launch a podcast at the end. Like, yeah, it would just that be, would a be full her podcast. Marriage. Yes, a thousand percent. <laughs> we would absolutely celebrate it. I feel like she's like, I'm not going to get rid of anybody because this is just this crowd is fun. But she hits me as someone who's like totally happy being single and isn't necessarily like looking for anyone and if anything guys are going to get like in her way of having like a great life yeah she kind of hits me as that person she just seems to be so content in her own personality that she's just like no me and me are good like i'm marrying me (laughs) oh my god yes april yes 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 like when she did that like power women speech yeah (laughs) like that that's just that's just her saying like i don't need anyone i'm just marrying me like anyone else is not as fun as me the end of the speech was her proposing to herself exactly i love that i love that for april well we'll see we'll see i mean either way we have so many amazing options for golden bachelorette if they do it who knows that would be awesome though they absolutely should i sure hope so okay well this episode um jesse palmer pops in and lets the ladies know that there's going to be one one one-on-one date that is a once in a lifetime magical treat yes okay and then there's one group date yes So the buildup to this date is like everyone's like wants to go on this date. Okay. Faith gets the one on one. And it was just one of those moments again where I'm like, this is why I love this show so much. The women are celebrating her. You know what I mean? Susan is celebrating her. Susan did not have a one on one date yet. And she knows now she's not going to have one unless she gets to hometown. Sandra is celebrating her. Even Teresa, who I wasn't sure if she was going to struggle with this, was celebrating her. That's the thing. These women are incredible. Mm -hmm. Sure, they're hurting. Sure, they want it. Yeah. But they won't allow that to like make them not be a great human. And I think that's what's incredible about them. And they're in the pool just going, woo! Like as opposed to every other bachelor or bachelorette, they're just like sitting there going, oh my gosh, (laughs) I hate this. Oh my gosh, she doesn't even deserve it. Like she doesn't even like it. She's not even here for the right reasons. Like there was not even, have you noticed there has not been a right reasons comment made? Nope. Not one. Absolutely. I really not wanted one. to hang out in that pool with those ladies, though. They God, were having I wanted a great to party. time. One of my most favorite parts of the entire episode is when Faith, she gets the one on one date, and her and Gary take off in a helicopter. And the helicopter is over the mansion, and the women are all in the pool. And they're like, oh my God, it must be them. And they're pointing up. And then all of a sudden, Sandra, who's sitting off to the side, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> goes yeah. into the frame, and it's like a fisheye lens. And Sandra's. Face. That was like a movie edit. <laughs> like, it was like the frame of all the ladies and all of a sudden Sandra's like head pops and it was just like (laughs) but can I just I had a little beef for a second Uh because they're like they go a once in a lifetime date and I hear the and I was like are you kidding me once in a lifetime you mean every (laughs) single single. GD episode Mm. is a I mean I almost lost my mind it's like I heard the chopper and I was like you gotta be kidding me (laughs) They're doing a helicopter ride and everyone's like talking about this once and I'm like season? every season and then it developed into more and I was like, okay, thank God. But I was like, <laughs> if you tell me that, that one more time that it's going to be a once, if JP says once in a lifetime again and gives us a damn picnic or some <laughs> shit, I was going to lose it. I was like, you guys have been doing so good. The budget's been high. I felt like the old days are back. And then they hit me with the, the helicopter again. And I was like, you're like, absolutely Stop. not. Absolutely not. But no. then it got better. So I, I, I calmed down. It starts off with a helicopter and Faith is like so excited for her date, but also oh my God, Terrified. I'm scared of heights. And But of course, we've talked about this a million times. I would never get in a helicopter it is not for me it is too scary and i was like i i feel you i feel you faith i would just be like no it's okay can we take the seven hour drive instead of doing the 15 minute helicopter ride exactly and you know what's interesting about the helicopter is that you don't really think about it because you're just watching the helicopter you're always like watching a view of the helicopter flying by but you're not thinking about i've never been in a helicopter before but from what it looks like whenever these things try to land when they got down by the water to, to get on the yacht, yeah. it was a really windy day. There were white caps on the water. Oh my god. And then this thing's trying to land and it's doing this. No. And I'm no. like, dude, I don't know. I agree with you. Generally, I'm not like a very trepidatious person when it comes to like a, like stuff like that. I generally am like, this sounds fun. The helicopter is the one where it's like you're driving in what feels like to me 
an invention from like the 1600s. Yeah, but yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's literally like a, a ball with gas in it, with like this, with just a propeller. Like Number it's one, just literally getting, like just getting it's the most in. simple like technology. It seems like, but also like problematic. Just getting into the helicopter alone is terrifying. Just the entrance, I'm sweating. I'm having a panic attack. Yes. I'm supposed to duck. It's like, be careful, duck in, and there's all this wind. I'm yes. like, no, 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 no. I, I Already I'm out. And then when they had them fly over and you see this yacht, but it's the water. Again, I'm thinking special forces. and like, all of a sudden they're like, Propel Gary, down. Faith, jump into the water. Like, it's just <laughs> That'd happened to a full special forces crossover. That'd be sick. It's like, climb the rope to get back into the chopper. And then they get it and then they're like, fail, <laughs> fail. And they're just exhausted and crying. And she's like, I just want to go home. Uh, yeah. But yeah. he, he was, you he was know, so sweet. Just such Very a calming. gem. The way that he was like holding her and he's like, I know that you're really scared, but you're about to conquer a fear. Like you're about to conquer one of your biggest fears and we're going to do this together. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was a really big moment for her and for him in the development of their relationship. Yeah. I know for myself, because I would have been absolutely terrified going on that helicopter and then landing on the yacht. Um, so luxurious, but I'm like, get no thank you. Yeah. Um, having someone like Gary, who is such a calming, encouraging presence, I'd yes. be like, this man's making me feel better. And if he's able to make me feel better right now, how often in our life would he be able to help me process through? I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. I think like he's someone, like aside the fact that he's super good looking and he's this great guy, his ability to be present and connect with people is next level. Next level. Like he's never kind of making it about himself. He's mm -hmm. always very focused on the other person. So he saw her spiraling. And instead of just probably being a bit like, why aren't you enjoying this with me? He made it about like making her feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's like big, like, oh, that's going to work later on in life for us. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? And I think it meant, meant a lot to Faith, especially when we find out more about her story, like her upbringing and all of the trauma that she went through yeah. with that. Um, and how in the past she's like, I've picked partners who because of my past trauma, um, they weren't the best partners yeah. for me. And when it comes to Gary, mm -hmm. she's like, I see someone who's not going to be that way. And also in the past, she's like, when I've opened up, I've had partners who then like will throw that back in my face and use that against me. Yeah. Where that is so not the energy of Gary. Not at all. I mean, he's the opposite of that. But also what I liked was, and this was something that was really interesting to me, was when he said, you know, you're amazing, you're beautiful, you drive motorcycles, you know, you sing. And then she brought up the the trauma from her history and kind of why she got into singing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense why when I listen to her sing, I don't cringe. You know, because generally I go, I don't like the serenading. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but like, why does she pull it off somehow? Why does it tug at your heart? It's because it's coming from a real place. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm not that good of a singer. I just used it to cope. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, she sounds like someone who, when she sings, it's coming from somewhere as opposed to just like, I'm such a good singer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she used it as an artistic expression to like of her struggles. make her f work through things. Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of the definition of like a real artist. I know. I know. Put an album out. <laughs> Come on, Faith. Give the people what they want. A golden, thousand percent. The golden tunes. <laughs> the golden tunes. Dropping this fall. From our golden queen. From our golden queen. Um, But, you know, it was interesting because at the top of this date, Gary said, he's like, I'm not sure this date is going to be pretty defining for Faith and I because I feel like I've... I feel like I've moved forward with a yeah. lot of the women um, and I really like Faith, but I don't know if we're there in that place yet. But after their conversation and his time with her, he was, they were connected. They went deep fast. They went too. deep fast. And his thing was kind of like, I'm very attracted to her and all I her know, when things. He was like, I feel guilty because I think I was thinking maybe the reason that I was right away drawn to her is because I was attracted to her physically. I'm like, that's okay too, Gary. Like, right, he's like, right, I feel right. guilty. I was like, you can find someone beautiful and then get but to But they them. are at an age probably. Sure. Where they're like, we've done that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I know that when we go home. Like, it's all going to be about the personality. 100%. And so, it's wisdom. And he's kind of going, hey, like, I'm just kind of, she's a biker, songwriter, hot chick. And he's yeah. going, like, that's <laughs> hot to me. And I, I, maybe I haven't really focused on the connection. Mm -hmm. But um, what I love about Gary is that when he, 
he's very decisive when he crosses a line with someone. Yeah. So like it's he'll do this thing where it's like he doesn't go. I'm gonna wait until the final dinner and then do the thing. It's like he'll be three minutes in and be like, "Here's the rose." <laughs> so it's like, true. It's like they're he like, knows. They're like Gary, wait, Gary, wait. Gary he doesn't wait. draw and it like, out. And here's the rose. He goes in and he goes. You know what? I just wanted to make sure that we connected. And then they, they talk for ten minutes and they connect. And he goes, "Cool, we're good. Here's the rose." Like he doesn't do this. Like, let me see all day dinner. Let me think about all the other women. It's he just true. he just gives the rose. Like he there like, is. Yeah, you're two seconds into the group date. It and was he's four already minutes like, into the date. And he's like, "Here's the rose." He's like, "Well, let's not play. Let's not drag this out and make." it a whole game when he knows he knows and then on with that being said same thing with the group date he was yeah. like i'm not ready to give a rose out exactly. so i'm not going to yes he's a, he knows what he wants and he's also like patient with himself mm-hmm. which i feel like is huge because what happens to a lot of people is they give roses but they probably shouldn't they they don't give roses when they maybe should have they have a lot of second guessing he seems to absolutely maybe it's a combination of he knows what he wants but it's also age right where it's like i've been here i'm not 26 and i don't well, really know what you know, i want I think when we've also seen a lot of producer involvement yeah. when it comes to this and maybe in this season we are seeing less they of backed that off a little bit and he's uh making the calls but i feel like it's actually created a, re- a just a much more beautiful situation Mm -hmm. like it was almost it's it's an interesting experiment where it's like let's experiment with just letting people fall in love naturally and let and then you you you, you, the energy of the show massively changes i agree yeah i agree but i mean they are absolutely hitting it off Mm -hmm. and like you said he hands that rose to her pretty quickly which is a big rose this is a hometown rose so one of three women he gives it to her so now we only have two roses i was a little shocked by that too just because of how serious it was (laughs) it was like he just gave it to her like bang and i'm like wait so now you only have two people left like i think he might have been caught up in the moment i feel like a little bit too you know like when they landed on that yacht he was alive he was having his james bond experience he was like this is amazing yeah. Like he loved it. Like they always say money can't buy happiness, but like, dude, that looked insane. <laughs> <laughs> like money, I, listen, money, like they said, you know, people say who have a lot of money, money, but money can't buy happiness, but landing your chopper on a boat and then eating a cheese board, like, I'll be honest with you, sounds pretty happy. You know what I mean? Like that is insane. Like that is a wild move. Like talk about like coming back to reality. You know when you when you like whoever he takes home is just like hey okay, we got to get groceries now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I feel like for him that's gonna he'll be able to put that in different mm-hmm. boxes. Yeah, you know absolutely, what I mean. Absolutely. I mean, like what a beautiful memory mm-hmm. we have. Absolutely. Um, but I mean they are in that hot tub uh, yeah. on the yacht mm-hmm. and they are making out. They've yes. got the champagne. It is. It's rolling. It's it's ideal. It and really have, is once in a lifetime. And I and I love this for Faith. I absolutely do. But I was surprised because we haven't seen her so much over these past couple episodes. I thought the top three uh, going to hometowns were going to be Ellen, Teresa, and Leslie. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So I was surprised that we had Faith, Leslie, and Teresa. Yes, interesting. Yeah. I love when they got back. Oh when God. they got back, and then. Um, Faith, you know, comes in. And I thought this was like the first time we've ever seen this too. Faith does the opposite of Teresa. And Faith just comes in and goes, hey, you know, uh, we, we had a great time. And like, well, what happened? And she goes, you know, I honestly don't want to talk about it. She's because like, I, I, I just I feel say. like it'll just be weird and you guys will be jealous kind of vibe. And she's like, I don't really want to say They're like, no, please, please, please. And then she's like, oh, yeah, we went on a helicopter, landed on a yacht, and made out in a, a jacuzzi, and then I got a rose. And everyone's like, why did you tell us that? <laughs> <laughs> Ellen was like, you know, that's something you keep to yourself. Meanwhile, she was on her hands and knees begging to hear it. Like, that is the class. I think me and you, we mean when me and you have issues like that, me and Jess do this thing where we're about like it's classic like when you're around each other so much you'll kind of about to say something yes and then you'll be like you're like that's mm, about to start an argument you know so i'm not gonna Never say mind. it and then it's like what it's like nothing well, well you already said it so you might you might just, as well just say it just, like, just no, say no, it just, just i don't want to say it and you know it's about to open up and then the you spend 20 gates. minutes pulling it out of them and then they finally tell and then you're like, why did you and then tell you're like me? you're honestly a bad person <laughs> That you why would even, you, why would you that ever you even say even that out loud? Think that? Why would you ever even let me yeah, say that? Like, you begged me. <laughs> it's so funny how it's like, it is like when you are a little frustrated, a little jealous or whatever, it really is like, I gotta hear it, I gotta even know. though it's so unhealthy. Yeah, for me I to know hear that it. I shouldn't know, but I gotta but know. I was dying, like, no, tell us, no, tell us, no, tell us, and then it cuts to Ellen, and she's like, that's just something you don't tell <laughs> you people, to be honest with you. You do not give those details. It's just not what you say. <laughs> 
And then it was so sad too because right before that, Susan was like, "Maybe for the group date, we'll go on a yacht. That's my dream date." And, like, and then Faith they... comes back and is like, "We were on a yacht." And Susan's like, "No." Yeah, and I think who that maybe was it Ellen too who that was like, "That's my date. <laughs> no, that's that my date." Was that Susan? She's like, "That's my date." Like, yeah, it's worst case scenario. Worst case scenario I to know. like have someone you're competing with for someone's love come back and tell you the date that you would dream of. I know I could never if I would have been in those women's situation. I'd be like, "You guys can you can talk about it. I'm gonna go to the bathroom." Yeah for a long time yes. okay and i'll be back in about an hour and a half yes once we flushed all this out and i have flushed in the bathroom yes double flush boom boom um okay let's talk about the group yeah. date but before that another quick pause okay. listen i like to say my skill is to decorate someone's life like our dear april but of course but i can struggle when it comes to the kitchen and putting together a meal but let me tell you where i've had success and what has allowed me to feel like a world-class chef and that is hello fresh i am telling you all hello fresh makes it so simple for me to make a delicious meal it blows my mind every single time with hello fresh you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep so you can and skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Mm. And with the holidays coming up, we all know that can mean busy days. A uh, crazy schedule can make it easy to fall back into your uh, dinner time recipe rut. With HelloFresh, you can keep meal time exciting with over 40 recipes to choose from from every week. Those ingredients arrive at your doorstep, pre-portioned and ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards. And produce travels from the farm to your door for peak ripeness you can taste i am personally obsessed with the quick and easy meals like their 15 minute meals wow that's less time than it takes to get delivery and more affordable too um and speaking of the upcoming holidays check out the HelloFresh market for the season's limited time fall flavors lineup like the apple cider cake with caramel sauce or the mini pumpkin cheesecake wow that's really that all I needed to hear. That's insane. all I needed to hear. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50MomDad and use code 50MomDad for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. Again, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50MomDad and use code 50MomDad for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Okay, next we have the group date yes. where they go to the Santa Monica Pier. It is Susan, Leslie, Ellen, Sandra, and Teresa with Gary. And they are here to play carnival games. And I have to tell you, if I was one of these women, um, I don't know if you presented me with carnival games, if our sweet king... Uh, Gary mm -hmm. would love that side of me because that's where competitive chess comes out. You get a little obsessive and a little intense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you take me to Dave and Buster's. You take me to Charles Entertainment Cheese. I get a little aggressive. It's a whole weird. different side of me comes out. Like I'm not competitive with sports, probably because I can't play them. But <laughs> yeah, there's a carnival like a game. Kind of like a mini demon that I'm having such a hard time imagining. That's this. what I'm saying. It's a little shocking because it's just kind of like it's a little bit. You know when you're like, it's not. It's just at like things like carnivals. Like it's always. It's mm -hmm. you're not ready for it. But Jess will be like, so sweet, not that way at all. And then all of a sudden you'll just kind of see like what's going on over there, and it's just like, it's a lot of. Do you have more tokens on you? You know what I mean. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, babe, I don't, let me see if I can get some more. And it's like, cool. It's like, do you have more tokens on you? It's like, <laughs> what? The tokens are for Ember. And I'm like, I need them. Yeah. And it's just a little bit like, babe, like we're just here having fun. Like it's not really that uh, big of a it's deal. Not fun and it's just like, anymore. I need to win this. And it's like, babe, no, you don't. Like, no, it's like, I get. She kind of gets the demon going. The demon And comes it's out. like, I need, this is something that needs to be completed. The second that I step on like fairgrounds, okay, <laughs> I get into a whole different zone. I Whoa. love a fair, but I get into a fair and I, all of a sudden I'm like pushing through the crowd I'm like what, are, what, what game are we playing next and I yeah. get a little intense but I also feel like you're, it's not about being competitive about other people it's yourself it's more of like I gotta get the ring toss going Yeah. and there is not an angel or a demon <laughs> in hell that'll stop me from getting this ring toss we will spend a hundred thousand dollars if it's gonna get this ring toss to and it. I'm like babe I could buy you that bear it's, it's 99 cents <laughs> You know what oh, I mean? No. I, I relate. I relate. Like, I used to play a lot of claw machines as a kid. Uh, Same thing. It's like, we can just buy this. It's like when, 10 bucks. We, <laughs> it's gonna we, be like, we're going to spend $50 yeah. getting this 
10 cent toy out of here. <laughs> Lee, when I see a claw machine, I have to use every fiber of self-control in my being to just walk past it because I know I'll spend all my money. Even I though know, you know it's rigged. Them. I know. And Even I know, you know it's that rigged. claw has no it doesn't matter. strength to it. It's literally just putty. And it just you pick something up perfectly and it just goes like this. It doesn't like, matter. I'm like, I will beat the system. So if I was at this date, I feel like they were all being so cute, having fun with their carnival games. It would bring out a side of me that Gary would eliminate me immediately. Well, you'd be is out all of sight. You wouldn't have, they wouldn't even have shots of you because you'd be on the other side working on some game that no one even said was cool. That's true. They're like, Gary wants to have some one-on-one time with you on the Ferris wheel and be like, sorry, Jess is playing the ring toss and it's hour 2.5. Yeah, you're like, Tell him you'll be done after the ring toss, after she wins the big stuffed animal. Give me a calendar year, okay, with the ring toss. You're like, we can't go. And they're like, well, we're going to do the, the fair. And they're like, we can't go to the fair. Well, you know, it's Jess. You know what happened to Jess last We're going to have to give her the one-on-one because you know what happens. It's, it's the only time you become like really competitive is yeah. stuff like that. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Brings it out of me. Yeah. A little scary. Um, but they play the carnival games. Yeah. Also, then they were going on the carnival rides. Which, you know, for people of a certain age... Yeah, I was going to say, like... I was like, this doesn't feel like a wise choice. Also, dude, carnival rides? So sketchy. Anytime someone unfolds a ride... Like, dude, no. do you understand <laughs> no. that these are basically... These are basically like origamis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, these people show up, uh-huh. and it's in a truck... Yeah. And then they just unfold the ride yeah. and like click it in place. Yeah. I mean, like this isn't stuff that's like cemented down no. with like checks and balances. And there's like officials from the government coming to like check to make sure it's built right. Like hopefully they screwed it in. I know. I know. Honestly, this episode could have just been like the episode of fear between the helicopter, the landing and then the carnival rides. I guess this is a Santa Monica Pier. So these it's rides, true. That's different. these rides are permanent fixtures. This isn't like something that just strolls into your town. No, <laughs> okay, no. Yeah. These are permanent <laughs> fixtures. So, so it's a different situation. But even so, I mean, Sketchy. the amount of like people you get sick on those rides. Yeah. It's just like and they're the hurting your least back. smooth rides. That's what I'm they're saying. Like, you're like, God, like, why did I do this? But, you know, they were on, they were going on the roller coasters and they were doing the swing thing. And I was like, damn. Although Teresa, I don't know if you saw the screenshots. I was like, I slowed it down because Teresa was on the ride and she, it, they were interviewing her. And she was like, you know, and I just, I, you know, I, I normally don't go on a lot of rides. Da, 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 da. Oh, no. And then you oh, saw Teresa. her and her eyes were closed. And I think oh, she was no. praying. She was just going like, oh, <laughs> and then her, at one point in time, her head like rolls back and she's just like this. <sighs> oh, no. Poor <laughs> Teresa. Like she was in hell on that ride and she was trying to be cool, but she was definitely like really not enjoying herself. Pushing through for game. Yeah. <laughs> Also, do they rent the Santa Monica Pier for themselves? Because I did not see a single no, other there person. People. There, oh, there people was. Around. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There were people observing. Um, but so they're going on the different rides, and then Gary starts having some one-on-one time. And the first person he has it with is Teresa. Mm-hmm. And Teresa is like, "I'm going to tell Gary that I'm falling in love tonight." Mm-hmm. She was saying too, the last time that she told someone that she was falling in love, it was with her husband, which yeah. is an interesting thing. That again you know just because of this being people of older age that i hadn't even thought about like that is such an emotional big step to have a moment where you're telling someone you're falling in love and the last person was your husband yeah it's a it's it's so much 20 something when she did yeah it's just it's processing through grief and all these um really big emotions i would imagine um but she ends up uh telling gary she sits him down and i gotta say Teresa. Gary is the king of eye contact. If he's the king of eye contact, Teresa is the queen. Because even when Gary looks away, <sighs> Teresa is just like, Gary, focus on me, Gary, Gary, yeah. Gary. And she is the deep eye contact holder. And deep. she does it and she does it in a way too where the eyes kind of get bigger. <laughs> yeah. Where he just kind of like keeps the same energy. She gets even more. She's like in your soul. She's in your so soul. It, it's almost like they're having like an eye off. They really just are. Looking, like, who's going to break first? Who's I think their eyes are watering because they're just like, who's going to break? You know what? Made, you know what really made me laugh? Also kind of like was like, oh, Teresa's cracking a little bit was she got into that conversation and she immediately was just like, I just want you to know that I think you're incredible. And another thing is, um, I really feel I deserve this rose because I work too hard and I care too much. <laughs> yeah. And I here's my resume. And uh, I really would love to, you to meet my kids and my family. 
And I also think that you should give me this rose and I would love to have this rose. <laughs> like she was really like, she didn't try to do the whole, like, let me just connect with you. It was like, I am selling you on this experience oh, 100%. right now. She's like, well, you know me. We had the first day together. Yes. You know that, you know what Kathy said that I'm, I'm the one. And it was so definitely, remember. it was like on that borderline of like Dwight, you know, and he's like, and one, two, we've done this before, but it's like that. All right. Say yes. Go one, two, three. Say yes. Give me the rose. Give me the rose right now. Just get it over with. Give me the rose right now. Do you have? The, I see it right there. Give me the rose. Give that to me now. Yes. Like she was like on that edge. She was like, please. No, she's like, she's like, I want you. Well, she told him. She's like, it would um, mean the world for you to meet my family. I don't want you out of my life. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can't live without you. Exactly. It, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I snapped my you underwear snapped underneath my my dress. My my apologies, everyone. <laughs> I was trying to be sneaky with it. it was pop. <laughs> but she she is like, listen, I don't want to live without you. Yes. Which I think is was a smart time to tell Gary this. It's yes. a smart time to tell Gary that you're falling in love with him, and it's a smart time to let him know that you don't want to live without him. And I feel like that is something that means a lot to Gary. I feel yes. like Teresa really was though, really getting his love language. Yes. He loves love. Mm -hmm. He loves communication of how you feel and how deeply you care about him. Yep. And she did that for him. But he didn't say anything back, right? He just kind of said like, no, but he hasn't said know. that back to anybody. Has he not? I, I was going to say, I felt like Leslie told him in like an episode or episode or two ago, that she's falling for him. And he said, me too. That he said that. I Maybe like that I'm wrong. I that was Ellen. And then he was like Maybe it was Ellen. I could have sworn. Who told him first? Ellen. Then I feel like he told it back to her like I am as well. I don't know. Well, we saw and that might be the only person, but then he lets Ellen go. So I don't know. I know we saw it. We saw it in the previews though, that he's like, I'm, I've fallen in love with three women. <sighs> oh man. My heart, my heart. Um, but Teresa, though, handles the fact that he didn't say I love you back very well. She's like, it's going to be worth the wait when he tells me he loves me. Mm. Teresa's confident. Yes. Teresa is confident in this situation. I believe that if he doesn't choose Teresa, that Teresa will be very shocked. Yes. I think that will be if he doesn't choose Teresa. I think that's going to be the huge devastator. Yes. Because she's confident that big it's the time. Two of them. I think she's confident. But I'll, I the only thing I disagree with you about is I do feel like it's like manifestation confidence not actual confidence i'm oh, feeling okay. a little okay. bit like she's on edge about like i don't know if i have it because she said i want the rose i feel it yeah. and i was like of course, you feel, of course you feel like you want the rose <laughs> it's more like you saying i'm gonna get the rose i feel it that's yeah. different where she's like i want the rose i feel it you know yeah. what i mean i feel like she's on edge a little bit it's that's my that's my vibe energies. well they get into the ferris wheel and they are having to make out she is scared but they are kissing through it you would be absolutely terrified evan is so scared of ferris wheels i don't play with that he does not do a ferris wheel the last time i took him on a ferris wheel you were spiraling i actually filmed it, it i think horrible. and i posted on instagram and you were absolutely spiraling i'm cool with heights as if it's fast big, yeah big rides fast cool dude Ferris wheel's horrific. You're just being dangled. So slow. And so like, slow. That's like the same one that's been there for the last like 30 years, right? Yeah. Same with the roller coaster. I don't play. I don't play with any Ferris wheels. We did that not too long ago. It was horrific. Yeah. I had to have Evan keep eye contact with me the entire it's, time. It was actually Breathe bad. Like I was it. struggling. So yeah. I'm done with those. Yeah, I could not be like romantically making no. out with someone. Well, Teresa like, well, faced her fears. Once we get down. Teresa faced yeah. her fears and they made out through it. Um, the next person that we see him have a longer conversation with is Leslie. And Leslie's yes. now been struggling. Yes. We saw her back at the mansion. She was crying. Yes. And she was saying seeing Gary going on dates with other women was bringing up old feelings for her. And she kind of hinted at it. But then when she was with Gary, she tells him that in her past, she has experienced a lot of infidelity, which yeah. broke my heart. And I was just then thinking, too, I'm like, oh, my God, if you've experienced that in your life, going on this show would mm -hmm. be extremely hard to like process through than watching someone that you care about take other women on dates and, and that whole process. That would just be a lot. Oh, it would just be like reliving it. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Right. Except in this, you know, situation, it is a consensual. Obviously, situation. it's consensual, but it's but it's it's so close. It's triggering, yes. That it's like, and it's consensual, but let's be real too. No one wants it. 
Yes, they want to so be with the like, person. So it's like it's consensual yeah. in the way that you sign up for this. Yeah. But it's not like this is it's not like it's not like an open relationship where you're like we agreed and we this is great and right. we're going for this. It's like a I'm cool with it, but like I'm hating every minute of it until right. I'm just with my person again. Right. So no, it's totally. like a weird middle ground. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, she shares it with him mm-hmm. and she starts crying. It's hitting her hard and he's just holding her and she starts expressing her feelings for him and how she hasn't felt this way in so long. And I was reflecting back on the fact that she mentioned in the last episode that she's been single for 20 years. So it has been a long time since she has been in a long-term relationship. And this moment that happened, I stopped it and Evan saw me. I was teared up crying. Yeah. Um, as they're holding each other, she whispers, I'm falling in love with you. And I believe that's the first time that Leslie shares that with him. Yes. She says, I'm falling in love with you. And he whispers back, you're my girl. My heart. My heart exploded. <laughs> also, an incredible way to respond to someone telling them, telling you I love you without saying it back. Mm-hmm. So it was like an amazing way to make her feel cared for yeah. without making the fatal flaw of being like, <laughs> I love you too. Oh shit. Now I didn't tell the other two. Now she's going to report that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was like such a genuine way to say like, I care about you so much, but I can't tell you that right now, given the circumstances. It was one of those moments where I was like, is this it? Is this his person? I'll be honest with you right now. Clear winner. I feel like Leslie's his clear person too. winner. And listen, I love it's so this show makes it so hard because I truly love everyone on our screen and I want everyone to find that love. But Leslie, I want this for Leslie. She's so chill. I know. She's just got such a peaceful energy. Mm-hmm. He probably wants that this stage in his life. Just like peace. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. But that's Leslie is who I'm feeling yes, I agree. might be our final pick uh, that, that I'm putting my money on Leslie big time. Okay. Big time. Okay. Um, and then we saw Ellen and Gary and Ellen is feeling really, really nervous. She wants this a lot. She lets Gary know she wants to be his teammate. Now, Ellen tried this technique, which obviously he ended up sending her home, but I loved the way that she handled this. She sat down with him and she didn't say, I think these are the reasons why we should continue on together and you should come to my hometown. She was also manifesting by being like, I can't wait for that moment when I introduce you to my my kids, when I introduce you to Roberta. I can't wait for us to be teammates for forever. She just spoke it into existence. Mm-hmm. She's like, I can't wait to be your wife. I can't wait for all these things. And she just said it. Yes. Now, in this moment, I felt like we saw Gary's potential letting her go start to show Mm. i didn't feel like he was as like a thousand percent me too ellen like you could see that he was then kind of battling with who he was going to choose because he didn't confirm all of these things and then she kept going like i can't wait we're gonna do it and you saw him hug her and hold her but it was still kind of like yeah we'll see and i think that moment with ellen is what threw him off for not giving out the group date rose. Mm. I think that was the moment because I think maybe he had kind of had in his mind who he was going to have his final three be. But then after that conversation with Ellen, it was like, maybe it's Ellen. I don't know. I don't want to hurt her. That's what I think. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like Ellen, because he brought this up. I feel my most comfortable with Ellen. Yeah. I feel absolutely drawn to her. I feel like that's the only time that I'm absolutely myself, but I don't know if there are romantic connections there. Yeah. He said that like an episode episode or two ago. Mm-hmm. I think it never truly developed. Into the romance. Into the romance. So I think once he kind of started developing it with Faith, Teresa, and Leslie, he started to realize, I don't think I'm going to get this with Ellen. Yeah. And and once that hits, there's nothing worse than that realization hitting you. Yeah. And the other person feeling the opposite. Yeah. Like I've never been more into you. Well, that especially feeling too, is torturous. Especially too when like on the Gary end where you're like, I care about this person so much and I feel my most comfortable self with them and I love being around them. That's that's brutal. You're kind of like you're everything I've been looking for except for that piece that's super important to like yeah. That make the difference between you being my best friend and my love. Yeah. I felt really bad for Ellen. Me too. Me too. It was painful. It was painful because like they really like at least the way the edit was, it was like 
she, I, I saw her top three at Me least. Me too. And I really, and Ellen is just so wonderful. I think everyone really wanted it for yeah. Ellen. Yeah. Tough. Maybe our next Golden Bachelor. Like uh, honestly, I would love that. Yeah. I she think she deserves wonderful. it. She would be wonderful. But then the group date rows sit down. Gary is like, I can't do, I can't it. do it. I thought he was going to walk off. I know. I was getting the energy where he's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And he put his foot down and he's like, I cannot give the rose out. I'm going to give myself more time. Yeah. I need more time to process this, yes. Um, which went to show personally how much he did then want to give it to Faith because he very quickly gave that rose to faith. faith. He knew it. Mm -hmm. So there were things that he was still really processing through during that group date. It was definitely what I think. Yeah. Faith and Leslie locked. Okay. I think it was a Teresa Ellen. That was the battle. Interesting. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Because I, I actually at the end was like, I wouldn't be shocked if Teresa goes home right now. Yeah. I, I was like convinced it was a 50-50 toss up. Mm -hmm. So what I think it was going on was that Faith, Leslie locked. I felt like the reason why he didn't give the rose out of the date, because he was kind of warring between Ellen and I Teresa. wouldn't think that he would give it to Leslie then. That's true. That's true. But maybe he was kind of going maybe Ellen and Teresa, not Leslie. You know, some, I don't know. Maybe not. But the, but it was, I felt, I truly did feel like he's like, uh, maybe it'll be too dramatic if I give Leslie the rose. That's kind of what I was thinking I got, a little bit. And you know, Teresa and Ellen going, wait a second. Yeah. And have them spiraling as opposed to leaving it more open-ended. And then everyone kind of at least can confide in each other. Like, oh, we're all stressed, right? That's kind of what I was thinking. I'm like, he's such an empathetic king. I feel like he probably was picking up he did on it for them. the energy of we're all sitting here together. Everyone's looking at me. I'm yeah. about to hand out a rose in this carnival setting, yes. which doesn't feel maybe appropriate. And then I'm going to give it to one person. And then the rest of the group is going to be really struggling. Yeah. Let's maybe do this in a rose ceremony environment. Yes. Agreed. Our agreed. empathetic king. Our he's, empathetic he's king. absolutely an empathetic king. Mm hmm. Well, before we talk about that final rose ceremony before hometowns, uh, let's take one more quick pause. One more quick pause. Let's be real, family. These are some hot dates that the mm -hmm. ladies are having. Personally, I love the prep before going on a date night, getting ready head to toe. And for myself, that includes Lumi whole body deodorant for the pits and beyond, baby. Yes, like I said, I like to get ready head to toe. And trust, I've been using Lumi on my feet lately because, to be honest, They've been getting a little stinkier these mm, days. So I've been using boots with yep, no socks. <laughs> exactly. I've been using Lumi <laughs> on the feet a little bit more, okay? The whole body deodorant, the first of its kind. Lumi is safe to use all over your body. Personally, where I need it the most is the pits. I use it on my under boobs, my thigh folds, and like I said, lately, my feet as well. Mm. Created by an OBGYN, Lumi is clinically proven to block odor all day and control o odor for up to 72 hours. How? Unlike some deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts, uh, more like a pre-odorant. It's aluminum-free, baking soda-free, and paraben-free, and it's pH balanced for safe use below the belt. Personally, for myself, Lumi has been controlling that odor for me and for lengthy lengths of time, by the way. Uh, maybe this is TMI, but about a year ago, I very much noticed that overall my body was just getting a little bit stinkier faster, okay? And Lumi has come in clutch with that odor control with their different products. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, which I love, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and and free shipping and as a special offer for our listeners new customers get five dollars off a lumi starter pack with code mom dad at lumideodorant.com that equates to over 40 percent off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code mom dad all right next we do not have a cocktail party no we don't get a cocktail party which was shocking to me i'm like this is a detrimental time of getting to spend a few remaining moments yes. with your final people so i don't know if they did have a cocktail party and then they didn't show it because we have an hour-long episode or if we just went straight into rose ceremony I wonder if they gave him the option it felt straight like into rose ceremony to me when we saw the um, after the credit scene with the women together, they were kind of like, all right, are you all ready? It yeah. felt like straight into the rose ceremony. Uh, my feeling is that he was, he had his mind made up and yeah. the, 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 like, he's going to have to sit there with Ellen. 
and like act like this still is a chance yeah. and be tortured by the fact that she's going, I can't wait to meet my family. And it's like, he was probably just like, let's just rip the bandaid off. True. True. Well, um, he gets up in front of the ladies and he explains why, you know, this is such a big deal. He's like, I'm yeah. coming into your homes. He spent a sleepless night and he knows that he has this responsibility of taking care of their hearts. Yes. Uh, he gives the first rose to Leslie. He's then bawling as he gives his final rose, yeah. like seriously crying. <sighs> Ooh. Um, and he gives his final rose to Teresa. And so leaving is Sandra, Susan, and Ellen, which I do have to say this, our iconic queen Sandra. Mm -hmm. There were a couple moments like after Faith came home yeah. that I re rewound to watch that Sandra wasn't there. And I just love the idea that Sandra is just like always taking a power nap, like a gorgeous queen power nap. Yeah, always. she's just kind of like, I know how it went. It went great. I'm good. I'm going to bed. She, I just I just love to picture her like who knows maybe she's in the restroom who knows but I love this idea yeah. that Sandra is like always out here being like no I'm gonna get a gorgeous power nap in. yeah I'm, I'm just, a gorgeous queen I'm, I'm having a, gorgeous a snack power nap. I'm yeah. making a quesadilla like yeah. whatever I'm doing whatever I get I do what like I would do at home yeah I'm just living my life in the mm -hmm. mansion here okay like you'll see me at the dates and you'll see me at the rose ceremony I'll be there That's when it, I need to be when there. I need to be there um but yeah leaving is Sandra yeah. Susan and yeah. Ellen um he kisses susan on the lips I and was, says I you're saw the that. best that, was, that killed me i, I, that. I loved that it was, I was sweet. Just like, it was it like just, such a sweet moment it was like oh my gosh right on the lips but it wasn't weird at all it was so sweet no it just felt like the, that first night where people were doing the smoochies on the lips yes. it's just kind of like you reach a certain age and you're and like, like yeah we're what, just like i'm saying goodbye business? i'm saying ta-ta we just yeah. do a cute kiss on the lips it was so cute he gives her that kiss on the lips and I says know. you're the best um he says goodbye to sandra and then he asks to walk ellen out yeah um, similar to Kathy last week where mm -hmm. he just walked Kathy out. It's like him and Ellen have... It's like, I know we have a serious connection And here. he knows that this is really devastating for yeah. her. Um, and he's trying to tell her that it's like, it's been amazing, the lasting memories that they've had. And he's like, the lasting memory of this night is going to be you to yeah. me. And um, she's crying. She's trying to breathe through it. Mm. And it was one of those moments where it's like, you know, I am obsessed with Gary. But I was like, okay, I think... Ellen wants to now let her like, go have a moment you could tell she was like can I just I'm gonna leave now like, she, she needed, was like this isn't this torture now yeah now she's like I just I just need to get in the car and she like you know gave him a kiss goodbye and even on the drive for a while with like the camera crew in there she was holding her hand up with the light and was like I don't want to talk I think it's better to break up in a raging fight <laughs> than it is to break up sweet because when you break up in a raging fight you can kind of so healthy you can kind of <laughs> resent them and be like yeah i shouldn't be with them they don't deserve me but when you break up sweet I then know. you're left with like wait did i make the right decision like she should have just been like well you're an asshole <laughs> and then just been able to walk away and been like okay well he's a bad guy and then you kind of like are able to kind of you know yeah. but but sitting there like sweetly saying goodbye to someone that is torture i know it's really hard it's really oh. hard it's such a it's such a healthy way of looking at it listen babe. health is secondary <laughs> to just ease you know <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah she doesn't want to talk at first but yeah. then eventually she does start opening up in the car yeah. and she's like he's brought optimism into my life her future love that was kind of a reoccurring statement by women in the, in the limos leaving is like, i think they got me another shot at this you know he really made people feel seen and gave people a lot of hope regardless of if Agreed. it didn't uh, end up panning out or not but then we get the preview for next week and we are seeing oh my god all the grandbabies. Oh. oh no. Like, are you gonna marry my mom my grandma? <laughs> <laughs> and they're giving him like they're like, I'm watching you. Yeah, that's Don't cute. you hurt my grandma. That's cute. And it's so sweet. And this adds a whole different level onto it because then we also see him not just talking to the grandbabies and like playing catch with the grandbabies, but then talking to the kids. And the mm. kids are like crying and saying, Thank you so much for making my mom feel loved and seen. And I'm sweating yeah. because this is going to be a whole, this is a hometown that I feel like is just going to be a whole different level of like just gut punch. Especially because of Gary. That's like what I'm saying. Like he's such a sweet, like he's kind of the dream guy that like, He's the dream stepdad. He's the he's the dream guy oh. that comes in and swoops your mom off his off her feet. Like that's that's the guy you Let have on the mantle. Let me make something very clear to you. I will never forgive my mom for not auditioning for I this know. show. I know. I will never <laughs> forgive her because all I want is for Gary to be my father. Okay, so <sighs> I want Gary in my life, and I'll never forgive you, Sylvia. Okay, just I'm just putting that out there right Seriously. now. Seriously, but if I so was so selfish of her, so selfish of her for not going on this show and exposing her life to Unreal. the public. But I'm like, if you're one of those kids 
and you're like, my mom's going on this show and that's kind of wild and this yeah. might be an intense experience and you're having all those emotions and then Gary walks in and starts talking to you, you're like, please join our family. Yes. So this is going to make it really complicated and really hard because there is no way that on every single family absolutely falls in love with Gary and is like, this is the perfect person for my mother. Yes, I agree. Oh, I agree. It's going to be a whole lot. A whole lot. Mm. Well, well, next week's going to be huge. Yeah. I'm Tune excited. in next week. I can't wait to meet the families of these wonderful ladies. Yes. I can't. I cannot wait. Um, to okay. the beach? To the beach we go for a very different yes. energy. <laughs> to the beach. <laughs> to the beach we go. <laughs> okay. Bachelor in Paradise. Right. And we've got some drama. I got to tell you, um, you know, the first few episodes of this season of BIP were a little sleepy. Mm-hmm. Last episode, this episode, it looks like the next episode, we've got some serious drama cooking. From none other than the queen cat. Than the queen cat. And I and I also have to say, regardless of how you feel about Cat and the way that she's handled certain things, the woman has brought us drama to the beach. Thank God for Cat. Because it would be a very sleepy season, I think, if it wouldn't be for Cat. Kind of depressing. I know it's Have you kind noticed of like, the energy? Yeah, it's an, it, the energy is off. The energy's weird. Yeah, the energy feels a little off. Like not excited to be on the beach energy. It doesn't feel like everyone's partying. It no. feels like a lot of anxious energy. Like everyone's nervous to get broken to be broken up with. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's mm. a little on edge. But Kat is bringing us the drama every single episode. Yes. So for that we thank her. We do thank her. You know. And I do feel like though someone who will be bringing some excitement to the beach and who already has mm-hmm. because it seemed like she created a truth or a dare game that brought us some spiciness yes. is our new Sam. So I the last Sam. episode we were ending it where we're like, okay, who's the woman who's walking down the steps? And then we see it's this woman, Sam. I didn't know who this was. So I'm assuming you did not know who it was. Oh, I'm a huge know. fan. I watched Canadian uh, Bachelor in Paradise. So I watched the offshoots of Canadian shows. I've heard Canadian Bachelor in Paradise is fantastic, but I'm I sure have not watched it before. And so I did not recognize Sam. So I was like, is this uh, someone from night one? Mm-hmm. Like, who is this? But we meet her. She is uh, from Canada's Bachelor in Paradise. And right out the gate, again, don't know anything about her. Don't know how she was on the season. Love the her energy. She just comes down with su- she's ready to party. She is ready to party. She takes three shots in four minutes. <laughs> she's just like, <laughs> I'm here to have a good time. And it was so weird because she comes down and well, first of all, she, when she meets JP, she's just like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like the way that she was doing all that made me laugh. She comes down. Also, we have a moment with JP throwing out his fluent French. Yes, that was amazing. Oh my God, I was did like, J- chill, dude. JP, like. Is JP rocking it. I forgot that he was Canadian. Mm-hmm. So he's like, oh, my fellow Canadian. And he starts like ripping the French. And I'm like, JP, we are all just flushed suddenly. J- calm down. But JP, oh my God. I know. He rips through some friends and then she comes down. And my favorite thing about it was like, it's the classic when someone joins late. Yes. Everyone's kind of tired, emotionally drained. Everyone's and exhausted. The person comes down and goes, hello. And everyone goes, <laughs> is that a new person? Like everyone's like, huh? Oh, hey. And she's like, you guys, what's up? And she's like, oh, she's how's like, it going? She's like, I've been in my hotel room for a week. Yeah, I like, am ready I to am hit the ground ready. running. Let's do this thing. And I love Sam. Sam has party energy. She just has like, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Mm-hmm. She's coming in hot. Like, she also immediately says, oh, let's take a shot. Super confident. Think about, think about how nerve wracking that would be. You're, you've never been on the American version of the show. Yes. So you know that these people probably don't know who you are. I'd be pretty trepidatious coming down. I'd be like, um, hi, I'm from this. I know you might yeah. not know me. I don't know if you watch the Canadian version. Da, 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 da. She came down and she was like, let's do this thing. And she was more confident than most of the other people who are big names on mm-hmm. the American franchise coming down. She came down with ultimate confidence. Mm-hmm. She came down with a uh, willingness to party, to get yes. the party started. Yep. She is the injection of energy we needed. Yep. Other than the drama that Kat, it's, she's positive energy. She's yeah. fun energy. And she's also a lifeline to a rose. She really is. So we see immediately <laughs> those sad, poor souls who are broken up with going, How are you my girlfriend now? And none other now, right? than the king of Desperado, the mayor of Desperate Town, the, 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 the biggest fan of himself and the show, 
Sean immediately just goes like, are you be my wife now? <laughs> so she walks down, doesn't even know what her name is, who she is, and just goes, can I, can I pull you? Can I pull you? <laughs> like, he immediately just grabs her, like, oh, we're yeah. going to do this <clears throat> thing. And she's like, oh, okay. First of all, I didn't realize until, like, that moment, she's 36. No, no, she's 34. Sean got it wrong. Oh. They corrected him. They did a little asterisk. Oh. She's 34. She told Pete, who's 33. She's like, I'm 34, which, by the way, shout out. Thank you for someone who's in their 30s Thank on the show. Thank you for some show. representation. Yeah, the 30s, okay. <laughs> but a 34-year-old, I feel like typically they don't have women who are in their mid-30s. I was like, shout out. It is funny how... I'm 35. Yeah. And I forget how old I am. So whenever someone comes on the shows, you know, like she's 32. I'm like, wait a second. I'm three years old. You know what I mean? Like whenever someone comes up in their 30s, I'm like, oh, we have one of the golden bachelors here. <laughs> They're brainwashing you. They're like 25 I'm stuck. only. So she comes down and immediately it was killed me how she handled Sean. Oh, because my God. She's the first person that like didn't even let the Sean moment happen. Like, no. everyone Sean she talked to... She didn't tell him that he looked like Ken right away. She wasn't, like, caught up in the Seanisms. Yes. She right away was like, I'm gonna eat you up and spit you out. Um, and she did. And I loved every minute of it. He kept coming back to her, and he was like, hey, I feel like you'd be great. He said the wrong age. He's like, thank you, Paradise Gods, for sending me a 36-year-old spice. I'm like, calm down, Sean, okay? Yeah. You don't have to... And then you're getting her age wrong and everything. But then he's just like, yeah, you know, I, I think that I'm um, very mature. And she goes, who told you that? Your mom? And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> well, no, no. Okay, hold Throwing on, hold on, the burns hold on. Around. You're going ahead of the ultimate diss she hit him with. She goes, you know, I don't even know how old you are, but I can tell that like your frontal cortex has, hasn't even fused yet. <laughs> oh my God. And he goes, wait, what? He goes, no, it's been fused. Like I'm super mature for my age. And then she goes, who tells you that your mom? And he goes, oh. and he goes, well, yeah, she does. But then also some other people do too. <laughs> and she just basically, she was like, oh, I'm going to pick you up by your Ken hair. <laughs> And I have this 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 sectioned off area called the friend zone, and I'm just gonna stick your ass yeah. right in it before you can even get a one liner or a flirt off. She goes, she goes, um, oh, I wish I had two roses, but you're too young for me. Oh my I, god! I can't lie to you. I do kind of wish that she would have given him a rose. Not in a romantic sense, but just to watch their dynamic would have tickled me. Like, because she was just putting him in his place left and right. Like, it wasn't... It, my favorite thing, too, it wasn't like... She didn't even do this, like, oh, my gosh, it's so nice to meet you, and you seem like such a sweet guy. She was but, like, you know, no. She's just like, ew, you're young, <laughs> and, like, can tell just from talking to you. And, like, I'm not interested. And he... I will say this. In Sean's defense, he took it like a champ. He really did. He did. I would have been mortified yeah no he he was bad and bad you could tell he was a little red he was getting a yes. little embarrassed but he didn't get defensive he, laughed it off. he didn't get defensive he laughed it off and he was like huh you know it's yes. like please still give me a rose i'm begging you and then aaron s shows up and yeah. just walks right in and i was a little shocked i was kind of like okay aaron is really still in this fight because we have not seen him even show two signs of kind of like as he moved on is he just waiting to end the show and then go well, I mean, with Sam? Te technically Sam just left like 24 hours ago if even that's true so then it was kind of a quick a quick turnaround so I mean the guy was looking that. for a rose but let's be real at the end of the day Sam did not give Aaron S her rose it probably would have been a way better move for Sean's storyline on this beach if he would have been like I'm leaving with Sam yes the other Sam Sam yes. Jeffries I'm leaving with her and we're going to deliver this poop baby together that would have been probably much better for and him it would have been awesome for them to take a picture with the poop ew gross you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they would have done that that would have been funny or at least just put a uh, poop emoji you exactly. know in her arms something like that exactly um but yeah sam comes down she's got that extra rose so then we end up having the uh rose ceremony finally we get the rose ceremony yes. kylie gives her rose to avon um rachel gives her rose to brayden the revenge rose eliza to aaron b cat to tanner jess to blake olivia <laughs> this was the shocker not yeah. shocker, but this was like the really 50-50. Yeah, she ends up saying no to Pete and gives her rose instead to John Henry. Mercedes gives her rose to Tyler, not yes. Will. Yes. And Sam gives her rose to Peter, which I guess between Peter... Well, no, because there was a lot. There was John B. There was the Will as a potential. I mean, there were numerous, so well, I was but surprised John she Henry gave it to Peter. versus Peter. Yeah. Right? That was the big toss-up for Olivia. Right. What was interesting... And I don't, they didn't clarify what happened. You see a small clip 
of Peter talking to Sam. Sure. That was interesting to me because I go, maybe that was the deciding factor. If Sam pulled Peter, obviously different, but you see Sean pull Sam. Yeah. You see Aaron interrupt yeah. To get Sam. Then all of a sudden you just see her talking to Peter. Yeah. So maybe Peter pulled Sam and, and Olivia that, was like, exactly. Nah. And Olivia goes, you know what? Maybe that was just the show. Maybe I John needed. Henry didn't pull Sam. Exactly. So, it was like, no. so that was kind of, my, I go, wait a second. They just brushed over that. They didn't. Why is Peter talking to her? Yeah. And then boom, it was like, she chooses John Henry. Well, she had a lot of options. Sam had a lot of options and she chose Peter. I'm assuming maybe that's production being like, let's keep Peter in to keep a lo- potential love triangle going with Olivia, John Henry and uh, Peter. I thought it was the obvious choice. Okay. Because I go, he's a good looking. Yeah. Older. Like he's true, in his mid thirties. Yeah. Has a career. Yeah. And he seems to always make a really good impression with the ladies up, up front. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I think that he's really good at kind of just the initial conversation. Right. So for me, I thought if if Peter's the obvious choice. So the second Olivia chose John Henry, I thought Sam's going to grab. Peter. Yeah, I guess the age thing too cuz I was like John B is there, John yeah. B is there. Yeah. Well, going home, we see Sean, Aaron S, John B and Will. And I'm like what's Braden going to do without Aaron S? Now he's going to be running rampant with his life choices. Know. Who knows? They're, the duo is broken up. We didn't even see them though be upset about it or sad. They didn't have like a big bro hug bye or anything. But uh, I was like don't worry gentlemen, all of you will be back next paradise. Yes. Trust and believe. We will see we got to see are Sean. There's some career people. We got to we're going to see Aaron S, we're going to see Will. There are career paradise goers and I believe because I'll be real with you, I thought we were going to see more drama from Sean and Aaron S. So I think they'll bring them back eventually. Some people in this franchise just have, when you look at their last three years of pay stubs, just says the bachelor add on it or the yeah. bachelor. You know what I mean? Bachelor nation. Bachelor and nation. So, and, and Aaron S. Yes. Screams when he goes to apply for a loan and they're like, can I get all your pay stubs? They're like, sure. And it just says bachelor nation. Bachelor like He nation. seems like a career guy. Same with Sean. Exactly. And Sean really went through it. He said he got bug bites, cuts on his foot and hemorrhoids. Well, and he says, how can you call, not call me mature when I have hemorrhoids? <laughs> that, was, that, that was a great line. He did handle it really well at the end there. I did. felt like he could have been a lot more tweaked, but he handled it well. He did. He did. Okay. Well, next we have Kat's birthday day. Mm-hmm. Um, can we turn the air on first? Absolutely. Though, I'm a quite hot in this costume. I cannot lie. I'm not used to having this luscious long hair. Okay. Much better. Thank you. All right. So. It's Kat's 27th birthday the next day after they wake up from the rose ceremony. And I'm going to be honest with you. Shit sucks. Shit sucks. It's your birthday. And you know, they even had at one point in her um, ITMs, they had the little, like underneath her name, the description said like, shouldn't something like should know birthdays never go well for right. you on paradise like right. they acknowledge that which they i was like knew. shout out to the show that mm-hmm. they're acknowledging it never goes well this whole situation really did blow for her on her birthday you know what it did blow on the birthday yes 100 <laughs> percent. like it did blow it to could have not- to have empathy for the individual whose birthday it is you have this thought in your mind, even if you've seen the show a bunch, where you're like, it's my birthday. It's going to be great, right? Like, there's this level of, like, they're going to give me a date card, right? Or, like, the person who I'm currently with is going to spend the whole day with me, right? And then when it turns out that they will instead make you spiral on your birthday, it's, it's a quite rookie shocking. move not to lie about your birthday on this show. Yeah, Because you got to know the producers, whenever they say birthday, they go, cha-ching. Yep, great. Time to torture this person. Yep. Oh, cat, perfect. Yeah. Um... She immediately is just like, you guys are all here to perform for me. <laughs> that energy. And I'm just a little bit like, we're not nine anymore. You know what I mean? You can't put this pressure on all your friends to be like, dance for me, you know, <laughs> d- p- plan for me. It's just a little bit like, we've all been born. I say it all the time. Y- you were born. I'm born. It should be like, I don't know what this whole thing's about like it's it's up to everyone else to celebrate you Mm -hmm. but for you to put the pressure on everyone else to celebrate you but let me say this can i hold on can i just hold your hand for a moment and can i just tell you i'm so sorry that you weren't celebrated as much during childhood on your yeah, birthday. <laughs> listen, listen. I'm this very, comes from I'm personal so, trauma. I'm so sorry. Okay. You if have. I can't be celebrated, then no one can. <laughs> Just hold your hand in solidarity and say, no. I, "I see you." Let me let me rephrase in a fun in a fun way. 
I loved how everyone knew Kat's birthday was coming. Yeah. And they were all dreading it. That's basically what I'm getting at is like they all felt the way I'm talking about where they were like, we know that today is going to be tough because whatever comes, it's going to be Kat's birthday and she's going to make us pay for it. But I have to say shout out to the people on the beach because I felt like they were really celebrating her all day. We actually heard too from I forget who, but someone said, well, you know, Tanner gave her that cake last night. So apparently a cake started the night before. Yes. And then into the day, they were doing, throughout the day, we just saw them randomly being like, and happy birthday, Kat. And they were doing things yeah, for her. They were, but they're all scared. It was, they- like, <laughs> it was like the, it was like a ruler. You know what I mean? It was like working for like a king or something. It was like, oh, please don't. Like, happy birthday. Like, oh, did I do it right? Shoot. You know Kat's what I mean? like, what's the theme going to be? And Jess, and she's like, Jess, you're a good party planner. What's the theme? And Jess is like, glitter and grace or whatever no, she no, no. Yeah, She literally like looks at the sky and goes, sunshine. And then she goes, yay. And then she's like, now what's a tagline and she's like you glitter <laughs> like the sky and she's like good that shall do mm, you will see you that's fine for now. <laughs> oh god i did it like she has that energy it was just like create a tagline for me now <laughs> <laughs> it's true that was the energy and i mean we see that a date card is there and cat of course is like I would love for this date card to be mine, you know, yeah. da, 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 da. And I was like, listen, Kat, you've already been on a date. It's not going to be your date card. It's not going to happen. They give it to Rachel. So, of course, yeah. she takes Kat's now mortal enemy out on her birthday, which yes. is already an unfortunate start for Kat, where you're like, oh, Brayden's going to go on yeah. a date. Great. Before we keep covering uh, the Kat birthday situation, Brayden and Rachel's date, they seem to be really having fun together. Absolutely. Uh, it's interesting. Once Aaron S. left, uh-huh. Braden, I felt like, came out of his shell. Now, I'm not saying Aaron keeps him in his shell, but it's almost like maybe Aaron was talking in his ear, like, can you believe this happened or like whatever. But like, and then maybe Braden feels like whenever you have a friend, you feel a little responsible for them. Maybe yeah. he feels a little bit like, oh, Aaron's not found someone yet, so I'm going to go spend time with him. When Aaron's now gone, I feel like he's able to fully just engage into Rachel and the dude's fun. Yeah, he's a good time. Like he's he, whatever fun. you think about the, the the guy, he he's he knows how to have a good time. He's he knows just how to party. Like, he just brings it. He even said it during like when they were painting each other. They just go, "This is life, man. <laughs> Life's just about being silly." Like he's just he fully embraces the silliness. Yeah, and there's no nerves. There's no awkwardness. I loved him and Rachel together because then Rachel really came out of her show. I was going to say, I feel like I will say now Blake gave a warning who, by the way, Blake is like the saint of the beach. Yeah. Blake is like he's in. He has all the wisdom saint in Blake. the ice. Saint yeah. Blake. He is the saint of the beach. He has all the wisdom in the ITMs. He's there whenever someone's like going through something. He's sitting there. He's in the background. It's always kind of Blake. And Blake's like, I'm concerned because Rachel has really gotten hurt a lot through this process. Yeah. Is going to be more tentative getting to know someone. He's like, and Braden, on the other hand, dives in. Yes. So I'm nervous about what the dynamic's going to be like. Mm-hmm. Um, but Rachel, I felt like we saw on this date a version of Rachel that we haven't really seen where Rachel was like silly. I mean, Rachel putting the paint all over her lips and in her mouth and it's all in her hair. I was, she was having a great time. I love I loved this Rachel. I love this Rachel. And I feel like Rachel deserved yes, to have a does. fun date. My she was God. tortured. She stuck with Sean, no offense. <laughs> and it's just like, dude, she was tortured. She was not having fun. She was like, again. Mm-hmm. You know, it's my third time doing something with this show, and I'm just alone again. I'm not happy. No, they're not like, rolling out the red carpet. And I feel like whether Braden and her and everything, whatever, the one thing I will say is that this was a really fun day, and she had a great time. And she's jumping into his arms and making out, and then they're like painting each other and like being silly and like, we see them you know, covered. Hot and kind of like there's a sexy vibe going on, yet silly and playful. And they're making out while they're in their costumes and it's crunching in the mics. Like They're also they're, sneaking up on people then on the beach who are unaware, like throwing candy at them That's these poor saying. bystanders who are like absolutely terrified I, when someone covered in paint just pops out and they're like hi yeah like do i think candy. yeah do i think they're gonna last <laughs> no but do i think it was a little bit of like she she had a fun boyfriend while she was on vacation energy we talk about all the time yeah. that's what she got i today. definitely do not see brayden no. and rachel making it in the long haul brayden I think. wants like a legitimate husband probably have kids soon energy and brayden's like i'm just looking for a good time and i that's the vibe i'm getting yeah brayden i feel brought like a lot of fun 
for her. Yeah, I feel like like for for Rachel, I want I want the best for Rachel, yes. and I think that that is still out there. That yes. person is out there. Sorry, Brayden, but Braden I don't think like that it's Brayden. Five years or something. Well, yeah, maybe. Who knows? Who but knows? but uh, for me, I'm like I want the best for Rachel. Yeah. Um, and I don't believe that it's gonna be Brayden. Uh, but I think, like you said, she deserves to have some fun. Yes. For once, my God, throughout her season, she just, I mean, she's gone through it yes. on this show. And I'm like, I want her to have a good time. And this uh, date was a really good time. And I feel like even if the one is not there on the sand, I hope for Rachel that her remaining days that she's there, I mean, maybe her and Brayden work out, but if they don't work out, I hope that then her remaining days are at least fun. Yes. Just and lighthearted. Agreed. And she didn't, and has a great time on the beach and she doesn't regret going on the beach. I, I agree. That's what I hope for it's, her. It's kind of just like waking up the soul a little bit. And I yeah. feel like on that date, that happened. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. It was just fun all around. Well, back uh, on the beach, fun was not happening all no. around uh, <laughs> because down comes... Davia. 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 Um, well, Davia is stunning. Davia is any it, it, your worst nightmare. Like in, in like anyone who's been on the beach for like a long time, and you're kind of been marinating and sitting there. You've lost energy. You've lost uh -huh. hope. You've been frustrated, which seems to be the general energy of the beach. Yeah. Davia is not who you want walking down. No. Because Davia is, she's gorgeous. Um, she seems incredibly kind from what we've seen from her uh, time on the show. Yeah. Uh, really sweet, too. Yeah, yeah. Everything so, like, about her. Davia has, like, a very sweet disposition. And so, like, it's, a, it's like a hug, you know what I mean, to mm -hmm. anyone who's frustrated at the beach. And also... She hit on JP a little bit, so she's got flirty vibes. She was <laughs> like, like, "By the way, your eyes are like the ocean." And, and JP's like, "Oh, I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. I'm married." <laughs> I, that. I was like, "Oh, since you did a quick turn, she's like, by the way, I just wanted to say that your eyes are like the ocean." I was flustered. Yeah, I was like, like "Oh my JP's god!" JP's like, I "Still got I it." I was like, "I was like, Davia, can you compliment my eyes?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, she comes down, and all the women are like, "Oh no, Davia!" You know, again, echoing, she's beautiful, she's kind. Sure, here she comes, and. She immediately goes for Tanner, pulls Tanner. We find out that, in fact, he is the only one she pulls, mm -hmm. which they were sitting there saying this hasn't happened yet. Yes. Everyone's pulled multiple people. Davia knew exactly who she was coming for. She saw Tanner and she was like, that's it. Very decisive. Which they hadn't seen. I mean, you're just like, full, like, I'm not interested in anyone else, which no. is shocking. You think she would have at least pulled a couple just to kind of see. Nope. She was like, I'm going to try this technique and I'm just going for Tanner. <laughs> Wild. Now, Tanner... I was like, listen, Tanner's my guy. So stoked. <laughs> Tanner, uh, listen. I her eyes absolutely stunning. But this man said four hundred times in a row, I think she's got one green eye and one blue eye. It's the only thing he could keep saying. Yeah. He brought it up to everybody that was sitting there. He brought it up to her. He's like, Do you have one blue eye, one green eye? Later when they're on the date, he's in the yeah. ITMs and he's like, I don't know if you guys have noticed. He's like talking to the producer, she's like, I think she has one blue well, eye and, and one then green after, eye. After when she pulled him to talk and he came back to the group, was like talking to Kat and he's like, Yeah, I think she has two different he color said eyes. It in front of Kat. <laughs> yeah, when yeah. they're sitting there and they're like, How did it go? And he's like, Yeah, I mean she, she's really great. Like, in fact, she's got one green eye, one blue eye, and Tyler's like, very rare. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm like, you guys, this is not how you do this, okay? <laughs> Keep it to yourself for a second. But he could not stop talking mm -mm. about this. He was just like, Enthralled. I mean, he was, he, and Later even, on, he's like, your dress is beautiful. It matches one of your eyes. <laughs> I know. I was just like, oh my God. Tanner, like, enough. <laughs> enough. And he was just like, I like her look. She's very cool. Like, yeah. he was very much he like, he was smitten, caught up with Smitten. Davia and when he sat down with her she was kind of asking what his situation was yeah. and he did bring up Kat but he seemed to make it obvious that he was open to getting to know other people um, so from Davia's perspective it wasn't like oh they're locked in mm -hmm. right now Kat's back with everybody and everyone's like oh no it's her birthday this is not going to be good. They interviewed everyone and everyone's like, oh, shit. <laughs> God, like, no. Like, there wasn't a single person that was like, uh, Kylie was the only person that was like, I feel bad for her. Everyone else was like, I feel bad for me. <laughs> that, that we know what's happening. You know, we know like, what's oh, going to no. come. Like, Please, Tanner, make the correct decision. Yeah, Blake okay? was like, um, you know, in cat fashion, she's going to freak out about this. And uh, like, she does everything else. Okay, which speaking of Blake, one of my most favorite things that I have noted, St. Blake. 
because all of a sudden when I saw Blake and Kat sitting alone on, like, one of, on one of the couches talking about Davia and Tanner while they were talking, I all of a sudden put together, I was like, Kat is always talking to Blake when she's struggling. And Blake is always sitting there kind of nodding, not really saying much, he but he's stuff always like crazy. there. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, like you know when I'm when you when we're talking and I'm like distracted and I just go totally. That's what he's doing. He's and literally just, going. He goes, wow, yeah, totally. And all of a sudden oh. it hit me where I'm like, I created a full fantasy story yeah. in my mind where I'm like, Cat comes off the beach and is like, you know, it was really hard. All these guys were really shitty, but I do have to say, I made a best friend, and his name is Blake. Blake and I are absolute best friends. We really connected on the beach. He is my soul. He is everything to me. We're not romantic, but he is like a soulmate to me because we just we connect so much. And then they interview Blake, and Blake's like, "Huh? What?" Yes. <laughs> like, Blake's like, "Are you sleeping?" He's like, "Sleeping with his eyes open." He's like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> Wait, who? Oh, yeah, Kat. Yeah, 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 she's great. She's great. She's great. Who? But I oh, love yeah, yeah. this dynamic that she's like, we are best friends. Like, I love the idea of her she leaving. Attaches her to her, she attaches herself to people who are, like, are the farthest from caring about it. And there's something, like, attractive about it to her where she's like, I need to get that person to care. Yeah, I want to talk to them. Like, I just love the fantasy of her leaving the beach and, like, calling Blake every night to just, like, chit-chat. Well, and he's Blake's like, Blake's not going to be the guy that's going to try to fix it. He's just going to go totally. Like, yeah, she just, just wants to talk at someone yeah no 100% and I feel like Blake he's a good listener great listener and he also I feel like I don't know now I'm kind of obsessed with maybe a bestie relationship like I kind of have this obsession with also him like loving Kat as a friend he's like yeah, yeah I know she's probably gonna freak out about this but you know we're besties right. like, I, just, <laughs> I love that idea of them becoming best friends that's, that's insane. kind of what I'm hoping for in my brain is that they just like chit chat every night on the phone and she talks the whole time and he's just like uh-huh very yeah, cool totally totally I've had friends like that where I just pick up and I just listen for 20 minutes and then I go, cool, I'll talk to you later. And they go, okay, cool. I'm like, that's kind of like a friendship, I guess. <laughs> you could just swap me out with the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Sounds good. Literally. It's, oh, yeah, totally crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, cool. no, really? That's good for you. That's Oh, yeah, that is tough. Okay, bye. <laughs> Should I charge you? <laughs> Should I send you an invoice, a Venmo request for like $50 just to be like basically therapy or whatever that was for you? <laughs> Um, but Blake, yeah, is like, Tanner, I hope you make the right decision. Now, Tanner comes back. Yeah. Davi is like, will you go on the date with me? He immediately says yes. No question. Doesn't say, let me talk to Kat first. Just says yes. 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 God, please. Yes. She's like, Tanner, yes. <laughs> and then he's like, can I speak to Kat? Now. Here's my perspective. Mm-hmm. I think when you're on the sand, it's paradise, right? Do what you want, date who you want. Unless, of course, you've had a solidified conversation that you are just with this partner and that's yes. it, right? I'm all about go on the dates on paradise. I think Tanner made the wrong decision. Ooh, you think he should have pulled her before saying yes? No, I think he shouldn't have gone on the date. What? <laughs> Hear me Are out. you insane? <laughs> Hear me out. Not said no to Davia, but not that day. Because now is it is is the is the drama and fallout giving for the for the audience for sure. But for the peace of of the beach, I think if I was Tanner, what I would have done is I would have been like, listen, I am open to getting to know other people. Okay. Kat and I are not married. We haven't had a conversation where it's just her and I monogamous whatever I would like to get to know you but I'm going to be honest today is her birthday and I know she's been looking forward to it and expecting to spend time with me I don't want to reject you and say I don't want to go on this date I would like to go on this date but I also want to be respectful to Kat and if you are down to when you come back from whoever you go on the date with to continue to try to get to know me I would love that Mm. That's what I would have done. Wow. Couldn't disagree more. <laughs> um, here's the thing. But I, I'm going to do two things here. Uh -huh. In the words. Well, first of all, in the words of Sam. Yeah. It's not his fault she was born today. <laughs> that was like uh, That's a, that's that's I never felt so seen in my life. It's like, that's exactly what I would have felt no, like. I understand. Like, this wasn't like his fault that like he's on the show and she happens to be born on this day. Like this birthday like now everyone has to be afraid of you because it's your birthday like sam's going what are you talking about yeah so here's my thing 
first of all, I, I think this is what I think is totally going on. Yeah. Cat, stunningly beautiful. Mm-hmm. Personality, it's a tough one. <laughs> I think Tanner, <clears throat> originally very attracted to her. Uh-huh got with her over time saw how she dealt with people things is not into her anymore she even has made mention like she has not grabbed me to make out once we've barely like sure. ha- you know talked in a deep way like she knows like she's brought it up like I, she said all i want for my birthday is an open mouth make out yeah right if you've been making out every day and been all lovey-dovey that's not what you're gonna say yeah she's feeling unwanted she's not feeling that way Tanner's over it, but Tanner doesn't want to leave in hopes that Adavia will come down. Mm -hmm. Davia comes down. He's immediately like, yes, my ticket out of the cat world. Cat kind of knows this, I'm feeling, but here's, here's what I will say. The way that cat handled the conversation between Tanner and her Uh before he went on the date. Yeah. I thought was, I, I give her her flowers big time. She was not biting him. She was not tearing his head off going, how dare you on my birthday? She just goes, okay, I understand. Now, I don't really have any reservations. Why do you feel like you have reservations? Like, she just asked honest questions. Yeah. He kind of gave, you know, the answers that someone gives when they're not really into someone anymore going like, yeah. well, you know, I just kind of want to feel like, like I'm just like going to check some place. things. <laughs> I, I feel so good with you. I, like, I can marry you tomorrow, but I just do feel like <laughs> yeah. I should go on the stage <laughs> yeah. to double check. You know, like he doesn't know what he's saying. And she... And everyone ex- expected her to fly off on him, and he, she never did. And she goes, "Okay, I understand." See, what I do and disagree I was like, with, you though, know what? Like, I, I, no, you're right. You're was, right. You, but what I we do expected dis- way worse. But I do disagree. What I do disagree with, though, is that I don't think she was honest with him in the conversation. She goes, "It's your choice if you want to go, do what you want." Instead of saying, "I don't want you to go," no, no. Like what Aaron B and Pete were like, "I don't want you to go." But no, I, I. I I fully agree with you, though, that I thought it was going to be that I thought hell was going to open up yes. and she handled it very calmly. Now, I think if she would have said, I don't want you to go, I think maybe Tanner would reconsider as to not have hellfire on the beach. No, he would have gone. Maybe. It was a done in my mind. Okay. It was so done. But it wasn't don't you even think, close. Don't you think, though, he should have before he went yes davia he should have pulled cat first like what olivia did before olivia said yes to john henry she said can i please talk to pete first she went and talked to pete and then she went back and she said yes to john henry just to handle it the best way possible because that's what cat was stuck on then when she was talking to kylie after cat was like hey he didn't even pull me now we didn't see cat Pull Brayden oh, before Cat, his... Cat threw Brayden in the trash now, it like, been in ed- nine it seconds. It could have been edited out. No, because everyone said. I know, but but what we did, we didn't see true. What we didn't see is when Tanner said, Cat, will you go to the day with me? She also went, Yes, Tanner, please, God. Okay? She didn't talk to Brayden first. So that's where I go, Cat. Now you gotta, if you want to certain, you gotta treat people a certain way. You know what I'm saying? But. I think that would have definitely diffused the situation a little bit. I think Tanner has been seeing her, how she operates. Yeah. I think he heard all about how he got her, how that went down. She said to him when they were talking, oh, is this to even the playing field? And he goes, no, 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 no. And then two seconds later, he goes, well, it's kind of to level the playing field. I think he doesn't trust her. I think he's scared by her. Like, yeah. is she going to ditch me last minute? Yeah, like, no, for sure. You That's know what true. I mean? That's and true. I think him in his mind was like, she did it to him. This is how she rolls. I'm actually being nice by even talking to her at all about it. I'm just always I'm interested. not saying it was the right move. I'm saying yeah. I could see his brain ticking going, I'm going to say yes to this, and then I'm going to go talk for to sure. her, and that's enough. No, listen, listen, listen. We we all know how I feel about Kat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've felt this way for a long time. We all know how I feel about Kat. <laughs> yeah. But I'm always very interested in who then is painted villainous by their actions and who is not. Because technically, Tanner did the same exact thing and didn't get painted in a villainous way like numerous other people have who've done the same thing. Yes. In this exact season, days before, do the same thing as Tanner, don't get painted a certain way. It's always interesting to me. But it's the narrative that she deserves it. Like 100%. that's the narrative. I understand, but I'm, I'm just scene. saying, in, as far as justice yes. goes, you're kind of like, well, if this person is getting heat for that, because you know the will, like if you're like this person getting heat for that, then this person should get heat for that, and this certain people just don't. Olivia did it the perfect way. He did it half perfect. Yeah. He did. He did the back half good, the front half bad. Yeah. And I think everyone thought, 
Except for except for Cat. Like, you know what? She got more than she gave out. That seems fair. Yeah. That was the general vibe. But no, I agree. If you if, if you would have done the before and after, that's the perfect like that's the No, I think she still would have been upset, but yes, I think it would have diffused the situation. She couldn't a have bit. had like other than it's my birthday and that's rude thing to say about it right right because they they're not like committed to each other exactly now you know him and davia are on their date the date is going well they're vibing there's chemistry they're making out back on the beach you know the 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 troops are trying to really uh make sure that cat has a good birthday they're bringing the birthday cake down she's sobbing now i will say this throughout this whole thing and this is this is the thing about cat is that there are moments where I don't disagree with what Kat's saying, right? Like, for instance, what you brought up last week when she confronted Aaron S. And it was like, no, it's none of Aaron S.'s business. Exactly. Right? She was right. And there were numerous parts where I'm kind of like, no, I hear what you're saying, but it's then these ITMs where it's just so intense. (laughs) And it's like the shouting at the producers where you're like, okay, just remember, Kat, we are on television, so there is going to be a narrative yeah. that is going to be painted when you are like this in ITMs mm-hmm. because we're seeing this in ITMs. And I will say in the past few episodes, there was fire on the beach yeah. when she was upset about the Braden thing where she was just like, in my opinion, inappropriately shutting people down and not hearing out people who have valid thoughts, right? And their perspective as well. But during this episode, I will say, (laughs) obviously she was melting down with the whole cake and all of that, but when she actually talked to Tanner and then when she talked to Davia, the only time we saw the actual explosion was in ITMs. I felt like with her talk with Tanner and with Davia, she was pretty low key. I mean, she was upset. That was another conversation I gave her her flowers on. I got, you know, she didn't like fly off on her. Like I said, you know my thoughts her. on Kat, but I do have to then say, give credit where credit is due when you're like, okay. I thought that Kat, it, what's this? She never keeps, the, like, it was interesting. She didn't keep the same energy with them. So, like, she was very understanding, comparative. Now, the only thing she did kind of give Davia was like a, could you be with a guy like that? Sure. Who would do this to me? And, yeah. and Davia's like, yeah. And he was like, interesting. You know, there was a little bit of like, let me shame you into not liking this guy with me. Yes. Um, like, if I can't have him, you can't either vibe. But I will say she was much more like, oh, thanks for, you know, thanks for talking to me kind of vibe. They had a conversation. Sure, it wasn't like her favorite conversation, but she didn't fly off at all. I did appreciate throughout the whole thing. I did appreciate that Kat, at least from what we saw, wasn't making this an anti-Davia thing. Yes. Which I thought was going to be what happened. If anything, she was like constantly complimenting her. Did you notice that? Yes. She was like, wow, Davia's so hot right now. Gosh. Like she wasn't even doing like a look at that ugly. You know what I mean? She was yeah. she was literally like constantly just going, wow, she looks amazing. Oh, she seems really nice. No, or, she, she, I, I, I thought anti-Davia. that she was going to go anti-Davia. And she, in fact, I was surprised and happy to see that she didn't then come for Davia. It was an anti-Tanner Right, which if you're going to be anti, it's like, well, this is the person that I have that I was starting to form something Mm -hmm, with. mm -hmm. It's not the other person's fault. So I was like, okay, like, if anything, when she sat with Davia, she wasn't coming for her. She wasn't trash talking Davia, at least from what we saw on the beach. Yes. So I will say in this episode, as dramatic as it was with literally all of the montages of her bashing in the uh, the pinata bashing it in with the that was a great super cut with all the flashes of davia and tanner making out brayden's face in shock and she's just like all i want is a pinata and she is just beating she is beating it until it is literally into tiny shreds pieces she's like i don't even want candy in there i just want to beat this thing i'm like through that we saw that and we saw the the intense angry itms right but other than that, the actual conversations were pretty mellow. Not what I expected. Yes. Right? Now, the issue is next week. I mean, that's where, that's where I think this whole thing is hurt. She's just trying to be cool and understanding. We'll see if, the, if there's a levy that breaks. Because next week we got previews of potentially Kat going for John Henry. If Kat goes for John Henry, and in again, what it sounds like she's saying, I know that John Henry's with Olivia. I don't care. Yeah. If she does that, 
Oh boy. That is when I believe the beach will turn on her. Because for right now, we've had moments where the beach almost was turning when she hopped on board with Tanner and Jess was like, but I'm interested. And then she came for Brayden and all this stuff. And the beach was question mark. It's really Jess and Kylie who seem to be like the only, everyone else is kind of just like placating her. See, I, I don't know because for during the birthday, I feel like there was a level of like, like Tanner was like, oh, I feel bad. I, I feel like there was numerous people okay. who were like, Blake was like, make the right decision. I think there's still people trying to be like, hey, we're all in this Tyler's together. Tyler's kind of like, yeah, kind of, a, kind of wild, but you know, we're cool. Yeah, like, yeah. like I think it, there's still this energy of like, we're all in this together sure. vibe. And I felt like that during this episode if she goes for John Henry and Ooh. is like, I don't care what There's Olivia no thinks, back from that. then I believe the beach will turn on yeah. her. And then I think it's it's game over. Agreed. Because of all people, Queen Olivia, who has gone through it on the beach, is getting this solid connection with John Henry. It's like, no, 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 no. Of all people, do not, do not touch that. Yes, but you know, she is a good test for John Henry. So if John Henry ends up leaving her, leaving Olivia, then maybe Olivia dodged a bad situation there. True. So there is, it's like, it's like tough, but it's like at the same time, if, if John Henry could be stolen away by someone like Kat after having seen how she's acted and, and then chooses her, Olivia is going to be lucky that she wasn't with him. True. Now, speaking of John Henry. But that Henry, doesn't mean we won't despise Kat's actions. I will be very upset. I will fly because off. Because like I said, right now, today what I've tried to do, because I've had all my opinions about Kat the yeah. past few episodes, today what I was trying to do is when I watched that episode, I knew what I was expecting mm. this last episode. And I was surprised by some of the IRL convos Agreed. with Tanner and Davia. And I was like, again, like you said, I'm going to give the flowers yes. where flowers are deserved. Did I live for the montages of the explosions? A hundred percent. Lived for the drama, lived for the explosions. But if I'm pulling myself out of the produced version, I'm like, okay, well, some of these IRL combos worked. But if the John Henry piece happens, I will I will ride for my Queen Olivia. Yeah. That's for sure. And I think I think one reason why she did well in those IRL combos is because mm -hmm. she actually genuinely cares about Tanner. Yeah, because that she was a she very... She didn't care about Brayden, That's really. true, because the, the... That's the, why she flipped when someone made her feel bad for anything. But, but she actually cares about Tanner, so you could tell that there's like this, I'm actually hurt. Yeah, that makes sense, because yeah, the, the whole Brayden conversation Versus went like, so Versus like, my pride is hurt that you're having to make me explain myself. That's very different than like, I'm actually a little heartbroken. Yeah. And then we'll see how she handles this next conversation with Tanner. If she's just like, you're a horrible person and right. explodes in that way and uses all these extremes instead yeah. of just like, no, I'm not going to be with you regardless. Exactly. And just shuts it down. We'll see. Um, but speaking of John Henry, another thing that was happening on the beach yeah. this episode was a lot of interest, it seemed, in John Henry. Yeah. Because Sam brings in the truth or dare, which yeah. thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Bring some electricity to you. the beach. They were having moments where it was like, Mercedes makes out kiss with them. Kiss who you find the most attractive. I think that's what it was. And Mercedes kissed John Henry. It was full Love Island vibes, by the way. It was see, full Love Island vibes where you're like, oh, we're just going to, we're going to go for it. And poor Olivia is sweating. So Mercedes makes out with John Henry. And then was it Kat does a body, a, shot. a body shot off of John Henry. And... Olivia is panicking. Yeah, she's like, God bless. She's like, two people she's like, can we not with John Henry? Can we focus on someone else for two seconds? She sucks John Henry's finger, which was sexy. Um, an interesting moment in that truth or dare, Brayden was asked, who do you find to be the most exciting on the beach? Give them a lap dance. He gives Jess a lap dance. I clocked that as it's not about who's the most exciting who I, I clocked that as who's going to be the most awkward with this experience because because I don't know though because, because he goes like this seeing she goes she, the person goes fun, give him the lap dance and he looks at Jess and they both start laughing and then he goes over and Maybe. does it so I, I took that as like she's going to cringe I will say though we've seen a lot of clips with Brayden and Je Jess is kind of like hanging yeah, maybe. Remember they were like rapping together. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm question marky about that. I'm like I don't know if there's something going that felt on very there. Just playful, silly to me, like the most maybe. harmless version, but maybe not. Who knows? But then Jess is asked Oof, if this one hurt. Blake is like her guy on the beach. I was like, um, yeah. I mean, he's the only guy that I've like spent time with. I guess. And it was like everyone goes like, Ugh! And, and he even goes like, what the. Fuck? And there were a lot of long pauses 
It's brutal. And it was rough. And then we see Blake, and Blake's like, I don't know what that was about. We need to talk. Now, in this whole dynamic, Blake's then talking to Rachel about it, and I felt like Rachel was giving him some really solid advice. She's like, you need to talk to her. Which is interesting with the two of them. We haven't been seeing a lot of physicality, at least, again, we haven't been seeing much of them at all. But I'm like... The fact that this conversation hasn't happened yet yeah. is interesting. Well, Blake seems sad to me. He and seems so a little low on the sand. I, I've been getting this vibe that Jess is like, I like him a lot, but he seems checked out. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't seem like he really is excited to be with me slash be here, blah, blah, blah. So I see her warring with that. But then when we see clips with them, when they are, they're hilarious. They're cracking yeah, up together. I, I feel like we just haven't really seen them a lot. But I also feel like if they haven't had this conversation, it's like, okay, at this point, you guys have been together the longest on the sand. Yeah, how have you guys not this had... This conversation needs to have happened at yes. some point. And Rachel's like, go talk to her. Yeah. And so they sit down. Yeah. And it it's a tough conversation. It was interesting. I, I felt a little bit like I saw her age a little bit there. Because hmm. she starts bawling and he asked very simple questions and didn't push at all yeah. and he could not have done that process more gentle he was extremely and she gentle. was like i can't even do this walking away bawling and i was a little bit like that's really interesting that she couldn't even kind of just tell him like hey i felt like this this and this and i feel like i need to just you know take a moment to myself to figure this out it was like she had been avoiding having to think about it yeah it feels like that a little bit. And like you said, I mean, I, I think that he brought it up when they're now ha finally having this conversation. The way he brought it up, he did it as best as possible because I felt like he communicated. He's like, if I knew that you weren't interested in anyone else, like I'd want to be locking it down, but I feel like you might be interested. And I also felt like it was he was super gracious in the conversation too, is that he didn't then put any pressure on her right. he was like i think like i need to give you space mm -hmm. so you can feel out the rest of your time without pressure yeah and uh it was interesting it was because interesting. she she feels very i don't know if she's exhausted if she's warring i'm guessing we saw we saw a preview for the next episode and she is kissing tyler so I'm wondering if she is warring with, we know that Tanner and Tyler were the guys that she was interested yeah. in, that her friends Kat and Mercedes are with these guys. If she's warring like, hey, I don't want to step on any toes, we see the but Tyler I don't feel like I've developing. gotten a fair shot to like get yeah. to know them because I was with Blake, but I've wanted to get to know them, but now they're kind of locked in. And if I do try to get to know them, is it going to be bad because my girlfriends are going to be like upset because... yeah. I don't know where Tyler and Mercedes stand. I don't see Blake and Jess together. I never did. No, I know. I didn't and either. And I feel like they're both too similar. Like, I think that she probably wants to feel a little bit more of the experiment. Yeah. But when she's with Blake, it feels like she's kind of just married off to the side. Totally. That's the energy I'm getting. Yeah. So I think Tyler's a little more like extrovert energy. And I think that she's kind of being drawn to like a little bit more of that like, I'm in the party Mm -hmm. thing yeah no I, I i agree i agree because she made mention she's like i don't feel like i'm the only one who hasn't been able to like do anything else right and it's almost like i think she feels married off and that yeah. she's like wait everyone's having fun and doing all these fun things and i'm kind of not able to do any you know what i mean yeah yeah no i agree with you i never really saw them together i mean who knows maybe this moment is what will end up bringing sure. them together maybe her like kind of chatting with other people will ultimately bring them together but i don't know I just feel like he handled that situation Couldn't so have handled it well. Um, it's going to be like, again, we see her making out with Tyler. This is going to be real interesting next week because yes. I don't know where Tyler and Mercedes stand next week. Maybe then they're kind of like not serious. So it's not a huge thing. But yeah. if they are still like vibing with each other, dude, I wouldn't be stoked. Mm -mm. Uh, this is going to this is going to be yeah. intense. Mm -hmm. This is going to be intense. Mm -hmm. Um, so next week I think is going to bring I think uh, both shows next week are going to bring some serious it's going to bring some, some, some heaviness also too there was a moment with the truth box explaining it to Sam yes and he's like go ahead write stuff and she's like well if I'm the only one writing it then everyone's going to everyone is going to know that it's me and he goes no 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 everyone's going to be writing it and putting stuff in I think 
that like next week or at some point they're going to open the truth box and only Sam will have said things and it will rain down hellfire for her because she might she say some spicy in. shit to like have fun and, she, and put and it was her like shit her out first there. Three hours there too, right? And other people won't have put it in. I bet they'll like hide it from the other people, and, do some shit and like it'll that. be something. Because why would they tease yeah, that? that? I felt weird. like that was an intentional moment that they're teasing it. They're setting her up, and then we'll also see about the whole John Henry and Olivia piece because after the whole John Henry Truth or Dare situation. John Henry and Olivia had a moment in the hot tub. That was hot. He did a good job with that. Because she goes, it. she goes, is Mercedes a better kisser than me? I'm like, oh. I'm like, how do you respond to this? How do you respond? That if is you a just say no way, question. you're better. It's kind of like, okay, do I believe you? And he said, like, I need a refresher. And I was like, that was good. Could not have done it better. But that smooth move. Smooth. Also, I was like, like oh, John Henry's a little is, sleepy is, with the whole who me boy. I, I was like, is he? I'm just a ten. I was like, is he a player? Because that was a that was a. Let's be real. You don't look like that, and you do a tough job like that and have not a little player energy he's like who me i'm hot i'm a 10 and i don't know anything i need a little refresher it's like oh <laughs> you just exposed yourself a little bit there big guy oh, it's gonna be intense next week and we have charity coming yeah and we see aaron being like charity is she gonna rattled. ruin this for yeah. me and eliza's talking to charity and eliza's crying mm -hmm. here's my theory with that what is charity gonna say to eliza to like end their relationship this creep followed me all the way <laughs> yeah, like, like, i think charity probably only has nice things to say about yeah, aaron I b think so too. um so i think that that's a tease that's bullshit i think that they're going to be fine and they're editing other things in there yeah. unless charity is like he was like very much into me and then eliza's tripping because she's like oh my god is aaron still in love with charity why is he freaking out that she's here is it because he still has feelings for her yeah but I, I think that that's, I think that that's a, they're playing us with that I one. Agree. I don't I think agree. that it's going to be anything dramatic. She's not a shit starter. No. Charity's chill. Charity's our angel. We Absolutely love, we not. We love Charity. We love you, Charity. Um, but it's going to be a wild, a wild double, wild. double trouble next week. That's for sure. Um, so make sure you tune in next week. Um, we'll but we're going to do some down. call homes next mm -hmm. week. We're just going to have a great time. We're going to have a good time. And uh, we love you all. We love you. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Enjoy it, be safe, and uh, yeah, get into that costume lifestyle. If any of you guys dress up as Susan, please send it to me. Oh my gosh, please do. Or April, please send. Yes. We, we love, love you. you. Bye. Bye.